2023 <clears throat> planning board. Uh, in the absence of the secretary, I will call the roll. Uh, Chair LaFaro is here. Dennis Finnerty, vice chair, will be coming via Zoom. Secretary Glorian Burke is absent. Craig Catalanato is absent. Uh, George Mutu. Present. Tom Neely. Present. Kate Fulham. Present. We have a quorum. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We will go right into the afternoon session. Claire, this is not a work session. This is a no, it is a work it's session. Confused. Yeah, it says it's a, it got um, relabeled incorrectly, but it is an afternoon work session. Okay, and what about uh, two and three? They're not part. Of no, these, no, those are just the Southampton Fire District. Correct. Okay, why don't you come on up? please and sit at the table. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you. Uh, how are you? Good. The mics are better here, so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Claire, do you want to yeah, do so, a little intro? Just a, a brief intro. <laughs> and um, so this is a proposal for a um, 4,620 square foot footprints um, fire station on this piece of property it's located at 319 Upper Seven Ponds Road. It is currently a house um, single family residence on the property and that will be <coughs> demolished. Um, so the applicant is come here to get the planning board's feedback on a site plan on the application. So this is the close up on the aerial. Um, and they've submitted plans. Do you want plans? I do have full sets for the board, but yeah, a couple of sets we can share. Sure, just one second. Oh, well, you can have set this clear. Okay, yeah, and then I'll have them introduce themselves and then describe the application. Please, to them. yeah, okay, maybe you should introduce yourselves now. Sure, uh, Michael Shiano, we did design research associates on behalf of the applicant. We also have Buddy Wines and David Price from the uh, Southampton Fire District Commissioner's Board. Um, and also our team is here, uh, Ben Chalip from Chalip and Rogers and Steve Naroda and Amanda Jones from Aris Design are also here. Um, so uh, because a fire uh, house or a fire station um, is exempt from the pre-submission conference requirements, uh, before we actually made a formal submission of a site plan application, we wanted to just come to the uh, planning board to show you kind of where we're at right now uh, to try and get some initial feedback and comments uh, so that when we actually make our official submission um, uh, that would be properly noticed and all of that, um, that we uh, have some feedback from you guys uh, to start. Good. Um, so, let's just go to sign plan. This is a property that's about uh, 4.3 acres. Uh, it is located in the R40 zoning district, and a firehouse is a permitted use in this district. As Claire noted, currently there is a single family dwelling on the, on the site um, and some accessory structures. Uh, there are wetlands on the site. All of our proposal will, all disturbance, everything will be greater than 200 feet away from those wetlands, we will be contacting the uh, Town Environment Division to ensure that we have non-jurisdiction from them. But I just want to make sure that that's very clear that everything that we're doing is well outside the uh, wetlands area. Um, the, uh, what we're proposing to do is, this is a zoomed in portion of the, of the site. Uh, you can see the 200 foot wetlands set back here. Um, so we're going to demolish the existing structures, and there'll be a two-story firehouse with a footprint of approximately 4,620 square feet located uh, here. Um, everything is going to comply with uh, the applicable zoning setbacks. Um, and then there is um, the, the building will consist of, and if you have specific questions about the architecture of the building, Ben's here to talk about it. But just to give you a brief overview, um, the garage itself 
uh, is about 2,800 square feet. Um, there's a kind of an entrance mezzanine from here that leads up to a meeting room on the second floor. Um, and this is going to be proposed as a substation, so it's not like that there's going to be consistent use every single day uh, at this site. Um, and the second floor will have an area of about 4,217 square feet. And the site, the uh, firehouse is also going to be used by, uh, an, uh, served by an IA of the VTS as uh, is required um, for a septic. Um, Claire, if you just go to the first uh, aerial, mm -hmm. um, just to give you an idea about where <coughs> the site is. Um, so uh, this is located on Upper uh, Seven Ponds Road and Head of Pond Road. Uh, Head of Pond Road, there's a bridge that goes down to uh, the highway down here, and then there's Old Mill. Uh, yeah, Old Mill Road is the other kind of access to the highway, um, and it's kind of centrally located in the residential kind of area of, of uh, Watermill in order to properly serve uh, this area of Watermill. Um, the closest uh, fire uh, station other than this uh, would be on Hampton Road in Southampton. So this would really kind of increase the service of the area um, and uh, uh, provide protection to uh, a lot more people. So that's kind of the intent of it. Um, so we're here to answer any questions. Uh, so so let me just ask you a question sure. on that <clears throat> site plan about parking. Mm -hmm. What's the total parking? <clears throat> it's on, it's probably on here. It is, yeah. <clears throat> 40 spaces provided. And are those all necessary or? Um, so uh, it's necessary, uh, in ter so there's some immediate parking in the front for first responders. So they'll be able to pull in um, and immediately park and then get access to um, the, uh, the, the fire vehicles in order to uh, leave quickly from the site. Um, and <clears throat> uh, we're also, Kind of accounting for if uh, this is ever used for uh, as a as a meeting space as a public meeting space. Uh, so just kind of providing enough parking in the event that it's necessary. Um, and uh, I mean that, that's basically correct, right? So you may not want to build it all out. Say right? it ends up being a polling place. I was going right. to ask whether you have the intention yeah. of it. Our house is typically for voting yeah. or things like that. So if there is voting there or something, if we do have the capability. Parking spaces are based upon the square footage of the building, not necessarily what the daily needs are going to be. Okay, but it's pavement, you know, as opposed to non-pavement. Um, is, is, is the um, is it going to be pavement, or, or are we showing that the parking spaces are uh, impervious? Yes. Yeah. You know, the air is designed. Yeah, the parking spaces themselves also would be permanent. The aisles will be asphalt. Permeable papers, okay. And how many uh, vehicles uh, will it hold? Um, so we have, we're showing 40 spaces. No, no, no. I think uh, the fire. Fire. The fire. Yeah. How, how much? Oh. How many pieces of apparatus do you plan to have right. in here? Four. Four. Probably four. Like, you know, what truck? What, what type of trucks are you looking to have in it? That would be subjective to. But probably a uh, an engine or two, and a, a, a tanker, maybe a uh, brush truck and a utility of some sort. Rescue. That's further discussions we'd have to have with the it's chief's discretion at that point as to how they want to move their apparatus mm -hmm. around. But mm -hmm. so this will be a fully working substation. You know, you will have people responding to yes. and fire trucks and fire vehicles responding we, out yeah. of this to the surrounding neighborhood. We currently have a certain percentage, I can't tell you the exact percentage, of members who live in Watermill that have to drive through traffic to get the fire truck right. Right. in Southampton Village on Hampton Road by the high school to then drive back to Watermill. Mm -hmm. nice. Extreme waste of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, response times are key, mm -hmm. and that should cut response times considerably. As we experienced on Memorial Day weekend, um, can you give us an example of what happened? Uh, well, there was a serious fire in Farmstead, and some of the third, fourth, two engines came from the Shinnecock substation at seven miles through holiday traffic. Mm -hmm. It 
takes time. Um, so if we can get a couple pieces of equipment closer, um, this has been a long, long time coming when this board was created by the town board about 18 years ago. One of our assignments was to find and site a substation in Waterloo. And when he says this board, he means the board of commission. Commission. Yeah. Yes. No. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I just have two questions. You know, it's in a residential area. Yes. So there are people who are not happy about it, um, based on noise, additional traffic, etc. And uh, a secondary issue is that uh, the bridge that you have to go over is that going to support your trucks? An engineer would have to determine that. Okay. I, mean, I personally know. Sorry. Sorry. This is not a public hearing. I'm sorry. Thank you. That's that's also not a primary uh, way that we would necessarily respond. There are other avenues out throughout Mill Road. There's Upper Seven Ponds, and it's head of ponds headed north. So you would avoid that bridge yes. completely, and yes, that would that's, be that's the plan. That would be your protocol, right? That, definitely. <clears throat> but I imagine that if you're responding now in that area, you can't use that bridge. Oh, you, you probably don't mm -hmm. use the bridge. We don't use that bridge currently. Um, I'm a data person, so I think it's useful to see some of the data of the calls, response time, outcomes, and uh, you know really illustrate how you've come to this place of this location. It's you know on its face, it's clear, right? Yes, we want to have a place that's closer because we want to respond faster and not double back through traffic. Um, but I think it's also important because you do probably have that data to illustrate that and maybe cite a couple of case studies where if there was a closer substation in the case that you mentioned, um, how the outcome would have been different. Uh, because you guys are experiencing it very closely, it's sometimes you know, difficult to take one step back of what the community might be experiencing. So when you come in, I think it would be useful to have that data analysis just to show. Yeah, I agree. So it's a baseline. I'm George, curious you to find to know like how many calls do you have a year? Uh, any idea? Mm -hmm. We run about and a thousand calls a year. Well. Now that's right. strictly fire or do you respond to ambulance calls as well? No ambulance calls. No ambulance, so a, hundred, a thousand fire. So mm -hmm. Fire and motor vehicle accidents, right? Motor vehicle accidents, fire, automatic alarms. Yeah. So do you get false alarms? A lot. Yeah. So out of that thousand, what percentage do you think is, uh, you know, false alarms or, you know, by the time you get there, it's over because it's Ten. a... Or actually serious. Mm -hmm. 10 or 15 percent are actually... S serious calls. Serious. Um, fires, right. brush fires, uh, MBAs. Mm -hmm. okay. That's kind of what I expected. You know, yep. I just wanted to kind of... And you're that. bordered by the North Sea Fire and Bridgehampton Fire, or are those the two? Yeah, north sea north the and south, east. North Sea to the north and Bridgehampton right. to the east. Right. Mm -hmm. The Conic Road, Hampton Bay is at the west. Do you have any other substations? Shinnecock Hills. Shinnecock Hills. We have one up um, St. Andrews Road and Montauk Highway. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, so a big, <laughs> that's a big blank area you have where this is going. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. So again, in that respect, in terms of illustrating this uh, and explaining into the community, I think it could be useful to really say, you know, here's how we coordinate. Well, why can't you use Bridgehampton or why can't you use North Sea? What are the barriers to that to really... Um, Which we do. We, yeah. we respond to their calls, they respond sure, to ours. Yeah. But they're just as far away. They're, they're closest sure. as yeah. Yeah. in the center of Bridgehampton Hamlet area. Mm -hmm. But we will provide a map that shows where the closest substations right. are related to this and to show how it will improve the yeah. service right. uh, when we make the formal application. And the Fire prohibition district. on the bridge you'll include. Now what about um, George Wood yeah, so, yeah. So I mean, look, I, I know, so a couple of issues that I know that the, the residents would probably be interested in and from, from first hand knowledge that you know, when, when a call goes off and people no matter how much you take, you say, take your time and get to the firehouse. You know, responders' first thought is to get there as quickly as I can because I want to jump in a truck and, and, and go, you know, hopefully put out a fire or save somebody's life. But, so there is a speed issue that normally happens, you know. So I know that's something that's very hard to control, you know. But how do you think you might have your, your members kind of keep the speed down and responding? 
they're responding through this area whether they're going to that firehouse or not because they have to respond to the Hampton Road firehouse. And as we all know with traffic, mm -hmm. speed can't happen. You have to work your way through traffic. And responding to a fire, your blue light, as people should pull over, don't always. Yeah. It's a courtesy and light. It's a courtesy light. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. So time matters. Yeah. Seconds count. Fire grows, doubles every minute. So the, the traffic, the, um, the traffic congestion, you're experiencing just seasonally? Year-round now. Used to be seasonal. And now, now it's year-round. 12 months out of the year, you're expe experiencing traffic on the roads. I mean, we all see it as we drive around all year-round. It just gets worse in the summer. It's still a problem in the winter, but it just gets worse in the summer. No, no, no. I think we're all aware of the seasonal seasonality. Of right. It. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at Montauk Highway at 3 o'clock on a Friday or any work day of the week, try to come down Montauk Highway or any of these back roads when people are trying to escape traffic and you have to respond to a firehouse, it's, it becomes a real challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other issue might be, you know, with the, with the fire, fire siren going off, and I don't right. know how you, how you guys operate currently, or for this one you could look at um, if you operate a little bit differently. I know uh, a couple of fire departments have taken the issue of not, I know, pagers. dispatching is all electronic. <laughs> not all our pagers know. are going to be outdated with we all get texts. Yeah. Because so I know in West Hampton, that since we built a new a new station, we went to, if it's a, if it was a fire or an MV, we, we do the siren, but otherwise it's all like pages, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that, I'm just Sirens saying, are becoming these are concerns people will have from the community about that yeah. going off at all hours of the night. But Sirens yeah. are more becoming a thing of the past. They were more of a civil defense, defense thing yeah. than anything else. So you don't expect they're going to hear that blaring every time an alarm goes off, which is... In the middle of the night, they don't put the sirens off like they right. used to used already. Good. It's already something that, that's a practice. Yeah. Thanks. So in order for... Uh, just to acknowledge that Dennis is here on Zoom. Um, hi, Dennis. So that, um, so that we've covered a noise issue, mm -hmm. and what you're saying is that sirens are not used, right? They're used at, for certain types of calls in the middle of the day, but they don't, they don't sound the sirens at night. And, and a substation, only when it's called into service, will respond? In other words, will you be relatively inert until you're called on at the substation? I explain this best. Zone calls really is the big... <laughs> Out of that substation, it would more likely be structure fires and depending on what is there, what piece of equipment is there, would likely be motor vehicle accidents. Um, and more likely sure. in the eastern half of the uh, district. Yeah. But again, We're that would sure. be based right. on what's there. An engine would roll out, definitely for structure fires, possibly for a car accident in the eastern half of the district. Um, it, it will be based on that equipment. Um, but you know, out of that thousand alarms, you'd be talking 100, 125 alarms where it's possible something would ro roll out of that firehouse. Um, it might be during the day if the men that live in the northeast corner of the district, excuse me, members, <laughs> they live in the northeast corner of the district. Did you see my head twitch there? <laughs> <laughs> um, they likely will be at work, so they would more than likely be in, in town, and they would respond to an engine closer. And some, but maybe there was someone that was close, and depending on if it's an all-hands call, a major structure fire, someone's going to have to go out there and get a piece of equipment to bring it out. But we're talking a use pattern of maybe one meeting a month in the evening and, and uh, let's say, one, two alarms a week, three? They come in threes. It's kind of ironic. It's amazing but. how that works. <laughs> What about um, training? You going to do any training there? Training that, that wouldn't no. be big enough. The, our training room is at, presently is Hampton Road. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, that, that's uh, our new main headquarters at Hampton Road. Yeah. So the four thousand six hundred twenty square feet is that per floor or is that combined? Is it two thousand? I think it's per floor. Three? Uh, it is essentially per floor. So, uh, so the the, sec the second floor is f like forty two hundred square feet. And then the, the first floor consists of kind of this mezzanine situation where there's the garage and then there's uh, kind of an entryway here. Um, and, the, and the garage is about tw 2,800 square feet. 
and the mezzanine is about 800 with bathrooms and stairs and uh, elevator access. One thing you, that we've learned when, when you build a, a building like this, it has to be a 50-year building. You don't build it for 10 years. This is not like a house where you build it and most likely somebody's going to renovate it in 10 or 15 years because mm -hmm. styles change. When you build a public building like this, you have to plan it for 50 years, which is what we did when we did the Hampton mm -hmm. Road Firehouse. You build it for the what-ifs. We, who would have ever thought 50 years ago water mill would be developed like it is today? Right. The firehouse was a at Hampton Road was a substation to cover the eastern dis portion of the fire district, which was farm fields. Mm -hmm. It wasn't built for right. 50 years later where we are currently sitting. You have to plan this so that you're using your space and your tax, tax dollars properly to have abilities to be expandable for the future if necessary. Not that we think that it will be, but who knows what's going to happen in 50 years from now. Well, that leads to one of my questions was, does this give you the ability, allow you to um, increase your fleet size now or in the future or something? In the future, In other words, are you just shifting equipment or are you adding to your fleet, do you think? Uh, Initially, they will probably shift equipment. Um, but it's, things are becoming more um, specified and which requires more specific equipment so we'll give a place to house whatever that might be um, you know, from if we you know a little bit of a history lesson the Hampton Roadhouse was built in 1960 the Shinnecock Hills substation was built in 1970 prior to that everything came out of Wimmer Lane now if everyone's familiar with that house everything responded out of that house um, so the growth is we can't stop it um, and you know this hopefully was built buddy says is going to be covers for 50 years um, but you know we have pretty good crystal ball and we're looking into it and doing what we can and we think this will cover it but there is the good thing is this space is is big enough I think we did very well to find such a piece where it has no abutting neighbors it has expandable space, not that we want this, but it protects the public. And we're trying to expend the public funds judici judiciously as we can. And um, I think it's a good site. It, it's not on the main road. It's more accessible because of traffic. If we can, or someone can alleviate the traffic issues. <laughs> um, I spent the, 20 years trying to look at it. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a magic it would be uh, but I think you know it's, it's really the best we've been able to come up with in the years we've been and believe me we explored a lot of different sites and that was one of my questions and and we were no turned away nobody wanted us. multiple times nobody wanted to sell to us the farmers you know that I have extended family in Waterville one of the other commissioners does and no we were turned so did the town, what's the really, are you leasing this from the town or did the town no, give you we, this we property? are an entity on ourselves. We are a taxing entity like the school board. Mm -hmm. And this will be purchased and owned by the taxpayers under the Southampton Fire District. Um, We're not the Southampton Fire Department. No. That's a whole separate entity. Mm -hmm. We are a board of five commissioners elected by the town taxpayers. And we are in charge of fire protection for the district. In, in Southampton. But the district then owns the property that, that you're placing this on. Correct. That, that was my question. Yeah, we purchased it. We purchased it. We're able to sort of uh, a COVID purchase by accident. Um, we came upon it and um, as we were meeting in Waterloo, as we normally met in the Tucko School Library. And we came upon this site and explored it and it was, we were impressed. As it's proximity to mainly going north and east and water, I mean, even south. You just go down. You can just go out by the old mill and turn down Cobb Road, and you're there. Um, but it's just I feel very strongly about this site. Is it three bays? Did too wide, too deep. <coughs> two bays. Two bays wide, but double vehicles double deep. deep. Yeah. So stacked in front two, of one another. Yeah. Do you have rear exit yeah. as well? Yes, the drive through, mm -hmm. drive through house. Um, it will have three curb cuts, which we feel is the safest. So responding members aren't going to collide with a, a 
makes it into property. Chaylor from Chaylor and Rogers. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, so um, one of the other, besides plan um, requirements, is that you know something that dictates the architecture of this building somewhat is, and as as David was saying, you know, the water, the uh, windmill lane firehouse was much smaller because the trucks used to be smaller. Correct. The trucks are much bigger now. Uh, the overhead door has to be at least 16. <coughs> But he really wants it to be 18 feet. Um, so plan for the future. Again, and planning for the future and the footprint of this building, uh, the commissioners think it's prudent to provide you know, second floor space for the public use and for their use. Um, so once you've established a 16 or 18 foot overhead door and the clearances required even above that for exhaust equipment, etc., um, you know the the building gets gets taller than than uh, than a house but <coughs> that's because it's a special use right. your house. was there a, a ZBA issue about the height because it's 35 feet mm -hmm. there will have to be a determination related to the height mm -hmm. yes yeah. it doesn't conform to code yeah we will have to go to the zone right. e either uh, to request a variance from it or for them to make a determination that this is uh, a, a special case that w which they have done on other uh, fire houses uh, where it's uh, uh, the, the the need for the public good outweighs um, the uh, the variance that's being requested, mm -hmm. but that that's going to be up to uh, uh, our council, uh, Wayne Bruin, to to determine which application he wants to. Wonderful, he was here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we've done everything we could do with the existing site to to the siting of the building. Um, you know, works works with the circulation, but it's also the natural, relatively natural, low place on the on the existing property so that we're not moving earth all over the place to uh, to accommodate it but also so that it it sits into the landscape as much as possible without being completely you know depressed but it does it also still has room for a partial basement under not under the bay side but under the mezzanine and service side there's a there's a basement and what are the materials of the building um, right now we're considering um, stucco finish um, you know, again, durable, low maintenance materials, um, but that, in terms of the actual um, final decisions on that, we're we're still a little ways off from that. Um, certainly, we want to be, you know, harmonious with the neighborhood as much mm -hmm. as possible. But um, at the same time, you know, there are other specialty factors that that come into play. Um, where you know, wood siding might look nice, but it just really isn't practical for this sort of thing. It could be useful just to illustrate the size of an average size of a home in the neighborhood next mm -hmm. to the building, just for us to be able to imagine that and address different perspectives mm -hmm. that will come up. Sure, and and speaking perspectives, we can between our two firms. I'm sure we could come up with a rendering or two, so you could get a sense of what yeah, it's like from the street. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to we're requiring renderings now for all site plans. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've covered some key issues here, okay? Not using the bridge, noise, traffic. Questions? Yeah. You said really the fact that it's uh, going to be a, you know, substation is actually going to be used, but not full time. But not a full time. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. People will benefit <coughs> from their insurance. Do you have to uh, interact with the MTA since you're adjacent oh. property insurance. to the MTA? Yes, no. I'm sorry. What was do, the do, do we have to interact with or, or, or correspond with the, uh, the MTA since we are adjacent to the Long Island Railroad? I would, I would doubt I mean, it. They'd be noticed as part of the normal neighbor process. And, and by the way, I do believe that commissioners, you know, informally at least, canvassed the adjacent, uh, uh, the nearby neighbors to, to talk with them about the possibility of this and received uh, pretty uniform support, right, from at least the neighbors across the street. Talking about. 
We have not communicated. Nope. Oh. We have not communicated. No. Okay. No. Because we've gotten some letters no. of um, some critiques, and certainly from also the Watermill CAC had some questions. We're aware of that. Okay. Have you met with them at all? No. Um, but would be a good thing. Then we we declining a letter as we speak mm -hmm. to have their representatives um, come to our next monthly meeting. That would be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Want them on board. You got the president of the CAC right there, Rachel Verno. Mm -hmm. So you can set that up. Yeah, yeah that and the data, like, show, I mean, you have great data on calls, response time, outcome, and then being able to show that case study of how outcomes could be different to, subs you know, it, to say how you got to the decision of placing this here and why it's needed, but then also that data of call um, and dispatch to what location and how that would have changed to show how active the site will be. Um, you know, usually you don't have that data, but you guys do, and so I mm -hmm. think a, a small data analysis exercise to illustrate some of this could be really useful. Mm -hmm. I mean, a thousand calls, it's interesting to hear you say that. A thousand right. calls, 10 to 15 percent are only serious, so that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Dennis, any questions from Zoom? Is my audio on, Jesse? It is. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, what was the status of the North Sea substation reviewed about eight years ago? North Sea Road? Yeah. That, that oh. was purchased for a future main house dealing with the village, and that, that's still on hold. That was significantly larger. But and, four and significantly days. larger, correct. That was not intended to be a substation. Right. But oh. that, 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 would ha that would be a full fledged? A full, full fledged station should, uh, when bringing the village on board, it would, you know, because we, you're not aware, we um, purchase fire protection from the village. We have a contract with the village. They own the fire department. And that we purchased with, with long, range, long range plans of it being a main station because the Wimble Lane house is, there, is being outgrowing as well as it's 100 years old. Um, it has some other issues. So that's still on hold. Did you get that, Dennis? Okay. Thanks, thanks for clarification. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thanks very much for coming. So, and, and just to make it clear, we still have to, for everyone, we still have to come back for a full site plan application yes. and there'll be a public hearing and there'll be all of right. that. That, that goes on with a normal site plan right. application. So, and we, I encourage you to interact with the CAC. Definitely, we we meet in the water. We meet right. in the Watermill Community House. That's so it's right. That's we have. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank, thank you. Much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. So we're closing the work session and going into the regular session. And the first agenda item is old stables at Spion Anthony. <coughs> I'm going to go into my order. Sorry. My agenda items, if you don't mind. Um, my first one is number four, Sabana Cottage. And I'm going to hand, I'm gonna hand you uh, the report. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone lose a wallet? We found a wallet on the floor. Joel Perlman. <laughs> Joel Perlman. <laughs> <laughs> Joel Perlman. Maybe they're out in the corridor? Yes. Uh, so we reviewed this at the last meeting. I'm just going to hand out to the updated report. You just wanted everything cleaned up, um, finalized before we adopted the resolution. Yes.
highway departments. So that is on page three. And they said by email, March 21st, part of the stockade fence that is in the town right away along with the trees need to be relocated onto the property. Remove wood, wood curbing out of the right of way and driveway aphid must be raised up so the road water does not enter the driveway. So that's all been made conditions of approval. And so if you want to just refer to the conditions, which is page one of the resolution, I can go through them one more time. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Great. All changes and modifications to the site plan. Remove the one-way note for the cross access. Uh, compliance with the Department of Public Safety, Fire Department comments. Indicate evergreen planting, screening, the parking spaces shall be increased to a minimum height of four foot tall. The privet shall be replaced with the four foot tall evergreen. Example, our variety. Red cedars, a minimum height of six feet, should be installed on three sides of the dumpster. Note a charging location. Uh, note the stocky fence, trees, and wood curbing to be removed or relocated out of the town right of way. And note the driveway apron to be designed so road runoff does not enter the driveway. Mike, can I interrupt you? Sure. The plan you're showing there, and this, so both plans are active, right? Because this one doesn't show the cross access. Where is that one? This is the landscape. This is I know this is the landscape. That's plan. the landscape plan. This is the this is the site plan that's okay. been shown up here, and then it shows the little one, one that just says so the right. Moving. Yeah, so we're just we're moving reference. It's going to be a general cross access, not installed now. If it's installed in the future, you have a full site plan right. review. So, um, and then changes to the elevations. Consider the addition of shutters where visible, especially facing the residential zone. I'm just going to say shuttles shutters on the north side of the building. I want to be a little bit more specific there. And then just note the colors and materials of the building elevations. And then 3A through F and G, uh, or F are the general conditions that we went over before. And then G is the plain board encourages solar on the proposed roof, which was a comment from the last one. Um, A um, is the submission of the future cross access easement agreement to the west, south, and east. The standard title certification town attorney approval, affidavit, six sets of plans. And then 5A prior to CO is the filing of the future cross access easement agreement and the maintenance bond for the landscaping. So, um, at our last meeting, Anthony, you had some language that you'd found that was going to be specific for things like solar panels, um, water usage, things like that, which are not really shown on this. Can we, did you have that handy that we can make it kind of standard language across yeah. site plans now? What does it say? Just consider. So, uh, oh, I could, I could pull it over. Yeah, yeah. Pull it so it's yeah. a little bit more comprehensive. Yes. It can yeah. make it standard. Uh -huh. Also, did we talk about a sidewalk extension or did we not? Uh, not in this not case. Not on this one. Because uh, it's a pretty residential country road. Okay. Right in front of the yeah. Shrubber. So, uh, yeah. yeah, this is like by Fisher, right? Fisher oh, Signs. Yeah. 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 The other okay. one was the, well, the watermill one. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Watermill. Uh, the planning board strongly encourages the applicant to consider incorporating sustainable green design elements into the site plan to the maximum extent possible and where appropriate, including but not limited to rooftop solar panels, electric vehicle charging stations, grass pavers, pervy surfaces, green stormwater management, uh, and LEED certification for buildings. Okay. okay. So, so we'll take that, that but instead paragraph. of, uh, I'll just eliminate the electric vehicle charging stations because we're proposing one, right? So. That's one that's going to be required anyways, but everything else is encouraging, right? Or should we leave that? Is it just leave it in. Just leave it in. Yeah. Well, we're going to add something here about um, sprinklers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll give her some language I came up with. Yeah. Sprinklers? Yeah. Trying to, to eliminate them being used when it's not necessary when it rains and stuff like that, so. Any other comments on the report? So I'll have that for the new G. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, did you have any comments? No. Okay, great. So for your consideration. Okay, we're going to vote on this. Adopt this, please. Yes. Okay, motion, motion to adopt. Motion by George, second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Okay. Uh, five in favor, two absent.
You know, my next one is Peconic Beverage. This is a pretty straightforward application. Um, I have a report for you for consideration, and then the applicant's representative is here too. doing a mill work on the property. So that's something we did clarify. Just so we'll storage. have a condition, just storage. Um, but that is still special exception use. So we had a public mm -hmm. hearing just two weeks ago. But it's pretty straightforward, so I'm recommending we just approve it um, with any conditions and we can discuss with it. So it's sales also, Claire? Um, wholesale. A wholesale. 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 But the applicant's representative has a Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the board. Timothy S. McCulley of Council of Burke and Sullivan, 41 Meeting House Lane, Southampton. Um, there's one provision in the resolution that, it, that addresses comments from the Suffolk County Department of Public Works. They're requiring a complete overhaul of the curb that goes on to County Road 39. That's that's in their report, <coughs> widening, fixing the sidewalks, etc. But under 239F of the uh, general municipal law, only if we're building a structure, building or changing something on the access to that road, do we have to reconfigure and make this ADA compliant. All we're doing is changing the tenant. We're not doing buildings or not. I've had two conversations with Mr. Danzig at the DPW, and I have to tell you my first conversation with him, he was not aware that we were just changing the tenant. Oh. But now the report is out, mm -hmm. okay, and he's saying that we have to comply, although he said to me, it's up to you. He said if the board says they're not going to make you do that, we're not coming back. That was where his word to me. So I think it's unfair for us to have to reconfigure. I told him I thought it was going to be around $30,000 plus we're going to have to momentarily or for some period of time close down a lane of traffic on 39 to get that done. He said it was probably more like $20,000 to fix what they're suggesting. I'm just here to tell you and ask the board not to make that part of the application. I think it's totally unfair. Do you have a copy of that 239F? Of the what? 239F that you had referenced yes, I with can, you? I can give it to you. Thank you. Claire, I would yeah. recommend we get a letter from the DPW to this effect so that we have it on the record. Um, so, Thank you. you know, we just do standard referrals, right? computer you put the stuff in and the, the, it sends out so, so they, they didn't look at the uh, site plan at all they're just thinking it's a project and then they're responding accordingly yes whether we needed to send the 239f in the first place is a good question and um, so if that's determined that it's not um, can you get a letter to that effect Tim could you write us a letter me no uh, not you <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. They don't, once they've made their report, yeah, they the only thing that Mr. Danzig yeah. said is I can, I can make an appeal to Mr. Hillman, who's the chief mm -hmm. of the department. But once they put it in writing, you know, it, the thing is, they're, they're saying you've got to fix this and fix that. And now if they backtrack on that, I guess they think they might have some kind of liability. Uh, but they have counsel, the liability can, can anyway. Can we just ask council to read the code so that we know? They have the liability anyway because they put the curb in and they put the sidewalks in when so they redid the, the highway. Yeah. And that's and, my and question. And if you look at, huh? 
My, that's my question. If they did not look at this site plan to see what was going on, did they look to see that what's in there right now is in Yes, well, he was out. He did a field inspection. Did. Okay. So and the, what he's saying is when we put this in, it might have complied with the old standard, but not with the new standard. But okay. that's true of all up and down County Road 39. Right. Every time somebody changes a tenant, are they going to have to reconfigure? Well, I'm we sure have that's had. A good question. We we have had. Well, the Southampton Farm had to Supply. The sidewalk, right? Southampton Farm Supply. Just recently. Right. Well, it's, that's the mo. Kathleen's reading. I mean, this doesn't have to be answered right away. The mm -hmm. deadline is uh, July 27th, and since I'm not here the 13th, I just right. thought we'd bring this up nice right. and early to see if we could work up any sticking points, which that's that's the big one, I think. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, things are just... I, otherwise, the, the resolution is fine. We're just here to discuss. It. So if Kathleen needs... Um, Council, so I'd like to look at it. I mean... If the question is whether or not it has to be referred, had to be referred in the first place, it does indicate access to or otherwise directly related to an existing or proposed right of way. I, I'm sorry, couldn't you hear something? I think it's best if I speak with Tim yeah. separately. Okay. Yeah. I so think so. That we'll do that. Speak with counsel on it and see if we can come to a conclusion. We'll take it into All advisement. Right. Am I supposed to confer with you, as you say? Or? Yeah, we'll talk. Okay. Okay, okay so thank no you. action. Thank so, you. We'll so hold, hold yeah. the action and the hold the action until the July 27th, 27th, but I'll, I'll update the report accordingly, Great. you know, uh, with what the conclusion is. Okay, okay. okay. thank you. And then we it. need to request the extension. No, you don't, because okay. we'll do it on July 27th. Okay, thanks. Yeah, perfect. Thank, right. thank you. Do you want to do Galilee Church of God? Yeah, so this is an OV. Now, let me bring up the aerial. So they, back in 1994, the planning board approved a site plan for what a church. What year? 1994? Yeah. Okay. So, but um, they have been working on the project. You re-approved it back uh, about 10 years ago, and they consequently did move the church, uh, rebuilt it. Everything related to the building is in conformance. What they haven't completed is the parking lot for the project, and since then, even since then, ADA requirements have become more, so they're also gonna do a ramp to get into the church. So those are the two outstanding big issues. They've been working with the town engineer. We don't have anything formal yet from the town engineer, but um, I'm gonna leave that as a condition of approval that we get them, and that they have been the applicant's representatives here and they have been working with them. For us or what? I have a resolution for you. And it was originally in the packet, but I'm gonna give you a copy now. Just a second. So they're here for reapproval, but we can't do that without the revised plan? Oh, we have a project? revised plan. We have. Okay. Yes, and they say that they've been working with the town engineer that is in accordance with that. Mm -hmm. And that would just be subject to um, obviously, if there's some conditions, Tom would have to they could do some modifications. So this is um, this is a copy of the survey. So you have it. And that shows all the drainage you have to do for the parking lot in the back. The next page. Yeah, this is the best. This will show the layout yeah. for the parking. Very similar to what was approved already. It's just now, you know. Standards have changed. As you see, the handicap ramp is here up on the north side with the appropriate handicap mm -hmm, parking mm -hmm. spaces and such. So the applicant's representative is here if you have any questions. Um, so it was approved in 94. Yes, and then reapproved in 2013 by the planning board. And then that's when uh, the building was completed and um, the parking lot, as you see from the aerial, is still not completed. They've informally used some of the portion in the back, but not formally improved it. This would bring it all into conformance for the building and the size of the building. So, um, they, uh, so my conditions related to this. So yes, I didn't get the referral back from the town engineer or the fire marshal, so I'm gonna have those as conditions of approval. 
do we know the size of this lot? The whole, I don't see that. Okay, let me see. Just some details on it. Sure. Altogether, it's 35,030 square feet. And I'll add that into the resolution. Please. And there are two parking areas, right? One to the south and one to the, to the west? Right, so it includes this other lot here that's still separate, but that lot will be um, will be merged into it's the merged, property. Yeah. So this is this other parcel, which is identified as uh, forty three, and so that would be the additional uh, square footage of sixty four hundred and eighty four square feet with the thirty five hundred, the thirty five thousand I just described. Plus, yes. So does that say all of that in here, Claire? That that I can say that that parcel is going to be merged. Yes. So that's what um, number two indicates. Uh, the conditions prior to the issuance of CO, the applicant shall verify such merger with the appropriate documentation. So that was a condition, and I'll just spell out the tax map numbers for that. Right. Yeah. The applicant's representative is here if you have any questions. Any any uh, clearing on that? Because it looks like it's partially wooded lot. So the clearing um, is, it's been mostly, there's no real over understory here on the property. It's mostly disturbed, and that's been a previous it's not determination. An, it's not an overlay district at all? I can't This is aquifer overlay district. It is a POD. Yes, but it's a mostly disturbed piece of property. That's determined by the uh, um, building department. So are they going to clear it completely? Yes. With the parking lot, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I know. How does that reconcile with APOD? You can come sit here if you like. Yeah. Good afternoon. Hi. My name is Justin with Capital Construction and Advanced GC. I'm their construction consultant for the projects. There will be no clearing. Any trees that are there will be staying. There is a large mound of dirt that has been dumped there over the years from who knows. That will be removed, but there will be no land clearing. So do we have on the site plan some, yeah. Can you just, just show us? You see the changes in elevations? This mm -hmm. is all one big berm of dirt that's been dumped there over the years. Just dirt, garbage mix. People just you know, use it as a dumping ground. That will all be removed. You know, there's basic weeds growing out of the pile of dirt, but Got there's it. no trees. There's no, no, there's no land clearing anywhere on the property. So what, what's the other part of that? Where? You're going to take out the berm. Yes, this is all just these and the elevations. And where are the, where are the trees? Because we don't, we can't see it on here. There are no trees being cleared. What, where, where are the trees? Where is it compared to the uh, overhead? Yeah. Thing? <coughs> I don't you understand could, the question. So you can see some vegetation there. Um, That's just vegetation they, growing out of the dirt. It's just out of the berm. bush, like you know, weeds and just mm -hmm. crap that's overgrown from the years on top of the pile of dirt. Well, the lower portion looks like a berm and looks like dirt, but what's to the north? That looks like vegetation. Are you talking are. about this? Yes. Yeah. That's, <coughs> that's the just bird. overgrown weeds and crap. There's no trees actually growing. Can you show a uh, yearly progression? We can get you guys pictures on site. If you want to I think that. I think that's yeah. important because it's yeah. APOD. From yeah. where I came. It's an aqua protection. We can get pictures from the site. Three, Three I don't know, years ago. Yeah. Eighteen. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Eighteen 20? years ago. Yeah. See, it's very cleared. Right. Okay. Well, it's cleared except for that one portion to the north. I can't. We can't tell from that whether yeah, it's, it's trees or what. Mm -hmm. But there is vegetation. We can get you tight pictures current side pictures you can see it's just overgrown weeds and mm -hmm. just overgrown. Huh, I wonder who cleared it. That picture may have been taken fall, winter, mm -hmm. see, summertime, everything grows back up. You can see the dirt up. piles see the in 2013 yeah. when they built the building. Yeah, that's where they dumped the excavation material. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. 
Uh, we can get a termination from a building inspector related to clearing if that makes you comfortable. I think it's important if it's APOD sure, and, and that should all be spelled out clear here. So. Okay. So this is, yes, uh, just so you know, this is a basis of uh, resolution like a from a 1994. So there's like a lot of history here, but we can pull out those staff reports and, and see how it progresses. Include some details. Yeah, yeah that no would problem. Be helpful. That would be helpful. Okay. Do you guys so, need a land claim report from the building inspector? It's like a, it's like a, we're going to do a referral and he's going to say whether this is a fully disturbed piece of property, therefore not, um, not subject to the aqua protection only light district's property. Right. And, and most likely that's going to be the case because you were approved originally for this full in 94, which was before, you know. The regulations were fully in fact. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But we, exactly. you know, since it's APOD, we really need some compliance and something to in our hands. On our part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then maybe, <laughs> yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh. Great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Um, so, and then in the meantime, we can get the town, you know, the town engineer and the fire just marshal comments too hopefully so that'd be we can, great we can put it all together in a resolution for okay and you'll, you'll use the latest ada standards i mean in light of the previous discussion and other discussions we've had you know they've changed their standards yes so we've already uh, installed the uh, 88 <coughs> handicap ramp okay up in front of the building okay and then we will be installing uh three handicap spots next to it parking mm -hmm. spots okay. and that's on the site plan yes, the ramp? yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, in any other circumstance, just to circle back of our train of thought, we receive a lot of um, revegetation plans for overclearing in aquifer protection overlay districts. So, we just want to track the history of it because if it's pre existing, that's one thing. But if it's not, then, you mm -hmm. know, we would have a revegetation plan and a landscape plan that we'd be looking at for this along with the it is, site it's plan. Right, yeah. But we just have to have yeah. that. On the record, <laughs> yeah, some pictures of too course. might be helpful. Yeah. For the and, board. and to the south, is that a junkyard or what is that? That is the neighbor's property. With all, the, all <laughs> those vehicles. The neighbor is collector, I guess you could say. This one right here. Yeah, yeah nice word. <laughs> nice word. <laughs> a collector. Okay. Yes, okay. Claire. Yes. Okay. Mm. Well, I was thinking buffers, so. So it'll have to come back. Yes, it comes back, no action, okay? Thank you. Thanks so much. So I'm gonna bring this back up on uh, the 27th, just so mm -hmm. you know. 27th of this month. Of July, July. sorry, yes, okay. we don't meet. Um, I won't be here on the 13th. And so between now and then, you guys just need a report of the vegetation. But Claire's yeah. gonna make Claire? a referral. I'm gonna do the referral. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll talk tomorrow. We'll be there. Thank you. And these are your plans, but? They're my plan. plans, thanks. Okay, number seven, Claire, the Lewis Road. Um, you not you don't list the action here. Oh, consider approval of an entrance road. Yes, and not the second item. That's been taken off the agenda. The second little notation. So this is to approve the entrance road improvements, which is at Central Kearney Lane. Um, we got referrals back from the town engineer. Um, well, from your consultant first, which is L. Um, K. McLean, and he had comments. Um, Can we have it up on the? Yeah, and then I'm going to give you the resolution. Just one second. The town engineer and then the highway department all came back and approved it with some changes, but they've all been uh, approved. So it's an access road. It's an access road. It's, uh, it's, it's a it's center being, turn lane at the entrance of the. Uh, while it's being con while construction is going on, or? Uh, no, the permanent center turn lane for the project. And here's the plans. Do you want to have copies? Uh, maybe you can show us one. the one in the middle. the center turn lane here and so it's been installed on Lewis Road so installed on Lewis Road yep 
engineer has signed off on it with yes. the specs. Yes. Highway departments, and they had some comments that this all been incorporated in this latest plan. Okay, so you want to go over this? Sure. Do you want me to read the mm -hmm. referral comments? Yep. Okay. So, uh, Planning Board conditionally approved the site plan application for Lewis Road on December 8th, 2022. Um, it's for a site plan for a golf course, etc. cetera. Uh, conditions, condition 5G stated approval of the center turn lane at the Lewis Road plan by the Planning Board. The planning Board's consultants and claim associates indicate their approval of center turn lane via memo dated March 9th, 2023 as follows. And they say we reviewed the plans. Plan addresses two of our December 2022 comments. We have the following main comments. The length of the left turn lane was determined from future anticipated traffic volumes generated by the proposed development. Being that future traffic volumes at the driveway intersection are estimated, we recommend that the applicant conducts brief traffic assessment after the facility's full occupancy. That assessment should include for wait day time periods for of both peak traffic on Lewis Road and the peak hours of site development, observation of traffic flow at the sites, driveway access for traffic capacity and safety concerns. It is recommended that the applicant obtains a bond to implement any additional traffic mitigation measures, i.e. a longer left um, turn lane based on the assessment a thousand dollar amount would be appropriate so was all of that done and that's going to be at the time this is going to be a condition of the approval um that once the once the site's fully occupied then if mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. cars are lining up past the length right. of the turn lane that they and would they have to make an additional Correct. extension of that turn lane okay um, and what about the bond? That doesn't happen until? That would be at the time of uh, prior to issuance of a building permit. That's where, how I left it in this resolution. Is that in here? He's outside. Let me give him a copy of this. This is 1200 here. So. There was an extra copy, right? 250 feet. Yes, on this right here. There's a few extra if you want. It's kind of skimpy. It's not skimpy. Those are the resolution. Those are the referral comments. Certainly, you your consultants and the referrals. That's the first time I'm seeing it. It was in the packet. Well, that's the first time we saw it. Yeah, that's the consideration for a resolution. They're whining and telling on the side. This is it. this thing. This thing I have um, yeah, Claire, so. I can't remember uh, what the report included from LK McQueen. They didn't uh, consider a deceleration lane for the right hand side, right? It was yes. Just, they are. Okay. There is. It's sh also shown on the plan. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. Uh, so I call, uh, is that you included? call it the center turn lane, but it is the a entire. The entire here, traffic yes. study you can see, you can see the, Okay. Is there no, the other no. right? No. Coming north. Yeah, west, I guess it wasn't. There isn't. It was something that was discussed, but I guess they they didn't actually end up recommending they didn't recommend that. that. Just that it, the left hand turn right. was yeah. the concern, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is that yeah. what you're calling question okay. when, sure. yeah. About the deceleration lane? But I, I'm very turning lane. I don't recall if there being any the determination about yes, you're talking about when you were heading west at that right. intersection. Right, if you were turning yes. right in, the only concern, I think it was considered and not recommended. Yeah, right. right. Those, okay, yeah, so thanks. Right. I just wanted to clear my brain it's of that. Been, it's right. been a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we just yeah. have the left we, turn lane, and then if that's not adequate, there's a $100,000 yeah. bond that the traffic study after the site's fully occupied, if it's not working, they'll just extend it further so that there would be no queuing inside the... That's from right. here, it's about 200 feet, 200 feet back, so you can easily stack like eight to 10 cars in here, mm -hmm. you know, all vehicles in there waiting to turn. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they've widened everything on the north side of the roadway. So the, the south 
surely remain pretty much the same. Okay. So they widen as existing. So if they needed to widen this they extension, they'll, have, they'll have to keep going towards the yeah. north to so kind of be, keep that alignment. So they're extending the shoulder north four feet, yeah. at least minimum of four feet, so they can create the center turn line. Yeah, actually, right. it's even more than that. It's almost like a full lane width. Yeah. 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 asphalt. And yeah. yeah. Tom's memo, I think, said a minimum of four, but. Whatever it takes to, to, to do wide, it, right, yeah. to, to, to create that almost, center line. Almost 10 feet. Right. Uh, yeah. And the town engineer had, what did he say? Surface, subsurface. Yeah. Looks like the original plan didn't show enough of a sub-base. Mm -hmm. So they're adding to that, which well, makes okay. sense. Interesting, the town highway department has six engines. And he's asking for what? Eight. Eight. Is that for load bearing for fire truck or something? Yeah, it's it's a highway manual, right? Uh, okay. so Shoulders often don't have As the much. amount of sub base that a travel lane does, yeah. which mm. I don't want to address too far. But he's basically asking it, I think, to be brought up to the standard for a, a real lane because yeah. you're creating you're creating road. another lane. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So do we have the specifics on the length of this and the width of it? Would be very good to have it in the resolution. I mean, it represents the plan, hopefully. Claire? Could, plan. Yeah, but it'd be nice to have it in language. Is that too much to ask for? The language. The length of it, oh. the width of it. So uh, the whereas, before the resolve, the plan board finds that the center yeah, turn lane be, of a certain width. Yeah, right? that would be a good place for it. You could give that to me, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think also as depicted on the, on the yeah, and and engineering the, uh, drawing. So, that's whereas the center lane of X number of feet and yeah, width as depicted on. Yeah. George is right, but it's not. That we've laid it's out here and measured where yeah. George is reading it. Right He's reading uh -huh. it right. Approximately. We're well, approximately, yeah. Kind of unless unless it, d it depicts it on that a little bit more. I don't know. Does it? I'm sorry, you have to come up, go up to the come podium up to the table. or come to the desk. Come to, come the, up table. to the table. Yeah. And give us your name. Yes, my name is Osman Barry. Yes. We defined up last month. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so we're just questioning uh, some detail on that um, center the length, lane. The length of the center turn lane? It's 250 feet. How does the plan show that? Because it's not marked on here, and if this is going to be for our records, we need that. Yeah, we'll have to provide you with that one and find an aerial photograph that shows all. It's 250 feet taper. By 10 feet wide, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. And the width of the center turn line? It says 10 feet. It's on there. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, that's 10 feet here. It's just the length of the lane that's not there. Okay, right? so Claire needs that information yeah, we'll for, the, that. For, the, for the document. And what's the width approximately? 10 feet. 10. 10. 250 by 10. And then the northbound median, that's just striping. Right? Yes. Just try to no medium there. Right. In the bond amount, Claire, you would. I think you, you, you have the recommendation in, in the whereas, but you want to put that in the actual resolve that's the condition of bond amount, a bond in mm -hmm. the amount of $100,000? Uh, I would not. I don't like sending bonds approximately. <laughs> no, no, approximately. I like, I I like uh, based on an estimate that we would verify, and then maybe it comes $98,000. But, you know, he's just saying he, that he thinks the $100,000 would capture it. I would like the amount to be based on an estimate that the town engineer would then say, yes, to install a longer lane of about 25 feet would be $50,000 or whatever that is. So okay. I'm just saying we should be set on the estimate. Okay, but let's yeah. do a whereas for it. I can do a whereas. I have a condition, but yes, I can do a whereas. Yes. So the condition is to submit an estimate for the town engineer's review so he can set the bond amount and then submission of the bond. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Okay, so our action is to Stop approve this the center turn lane. Mm -hmm. Yes. With all of the conditions. Dennis, any 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 comments <clears throat> on the center turn lane, Ken? We're not here. Your your audio is off, Dennis. Yeah, the sound has been really bad, but I have been able to follow it. So. Okay. Any comments on the center turn lane? We're going to get the length and the width of it, and um, put in the bond as a whereas. Any other comments, you guys? Okay. Okay, so I'll have a motion to approve this by Tom, second by George. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstention. Five in favor and two absent. Thank you. Thank you. And then my next one is for discussion. It's the Long Island Resource Corp uh, Tesla. Thank you. Is that the Hampton Six Realty Corp? No. No. no number Which eight. one? Number eight. Tesla. Long Island Resource Corp. Of course. That's the end. Hi, you. Harry Gray. Huh? Harry Gray. Harry Gray. Yes. A long time. Oh yeah. Right. I was just noticing that the color is oh, yeah. kind of um, brown leather. My, my, one of my, my 33 year olds said to me, um, I would never carry a man purse bag, but since you do carry one, that's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of things to carry. Scratches. He right? doesn't work as hard as you. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be looking like a schoolboy with your <laughs> folders. <laughs> I hit him. <laughs> Lovingly. <laughs> okay, Claire, do we have a, a report? That's the one thing I forgot to bring up. It's all my Tesla stuff. Okay. Maybe, maybe Jeff can get it for you? No, let me do it. Do you mind taking, I'm um, sorry to bump you, but I'm just going to go grab it because it may be impossible to find it on my desk. Do you want an extra one? You've got one. Oh, I need five. Oh, for the pool. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So if, oh, if somebody wants to jump in, do a couple extensions, I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. Back okay, want to do an extension? Oh, you could stay. You could just stay there. there. <laughs> my stuff, I don't have any, like, reports. Or your hands in six yeah. realty corp. Would you want me to stop with my first one? Yeah. Oh, oh yes, you're in the Old Stables at Spia. Um, this is the subdivision on North Phillips Road, if you recall, with the one affordable unit. Um, we're doing an extension of the action deadline until July 13th, 2023. It's because I'm waiting for the engineer to sign off on the description and all that. July 13. Motion? Motion. By George. Second. second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Opposed Aye. abstention. Five in favor. Two absent. Uh, number nine, I believe. Yeah. Hampton Six. Hampton Six Realty. That's yeah. the uh, market, Hampton Base. Yeah. Um, they gave us the revised plan showing the connection, so I preferred that to the engineer. I don't want to make conditions with some of these complex, you know. Right. Uh, so we're going to do an extension of the action deadline, this one until. Um, July 27th, 2023. Okay. Motion. Motion, Motion by Kate. Second by Second. George. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Five in favor. Two absent. July 27th. Number 10. 201. 16. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. 16. That's right. 16 Indian Avenue, LLC. This is. Completeness. Wait, what about number 10? Yep. 10. So this is oh, 16. Uh, this property, which is on Springville Road, right in Hampton Base, it's this lot here. It's in for a two-lot subdivision. Um, it's in the R20 zoning district. There's an existing house in the front, vacant in the back. Also, a, a portion of it abuts to this uh, road. Um, they're proposing a flag lot with a strip, or they're proposing a second lot back here. Be accessed from the road. 
This was something that we looked at previously. We initially had an application in some time ago involving both of these properties. As you can see, there's driveways and connections and all sorts of stuff going on. That application never went anywhere. We raised a number of issues about this piece uh, and have to deal with all the common access and driveways and everything. That application was essentially withdrawn. Um, now the applicant has come in with just a subdivision um, for, for this piece. Um, and obviously I think some of the issues are going to be the same about the joint access and all the rest of it. Uh, that being said, um, it, it's a pre-application. So we're just going to deem it complete, schedule the hearing for July 27th, and then I will, uh, I'll raise these issues in a pre-app report. Okay, so motion to deem right. this complete and the public hearing for July 27th by Tom, second by George, all in favor? Aye. Opposed abstention, five in favor, two absent. Hampton Cove Estates, Anthony, 12. Hampton Cove Estates, yes, so this one. Scheduling com this completeness? Yeah, let me just put it up here real quick for you. This is a property, very small property in the R20 zone. Actually had pre-existing CO for uh, hotel use here. I believe it's eight units in there. Um, and the town code allows for special exception, the conversion to uh, co-ops or condominiums. These units have been operating as co-op condominiums for decades now, uh, but the CO doesn't reflect that, so they've come in uh, to legalize it. I, I was waiting for authorization from all the unit owners, which we now have, but we're gonna do a pre-submission on this one. So I'm recommending this one a pre-submission uh, be scheduled for August 10th, 2023. August 10th. So it's complete and scheduled a pre submission for August 10th. Motion by Motion. Kate. Second by second. George. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Five in favor? Two absent? Um, number 17, which is Lewis Road. Um, this is just a standard extension. Um, you only get six months to uh, get final maps. This is a big project. So I'm just recommending. The first, the first 90 day extension for submission of the final maps, and that would bring us to September 4th, 2023. So that would be one September, September 4th? Yeah. Okay. Motion? Motion. Motion by George, second by Kate. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? Five in favor, two absent. And then I just had the one walk on. I don't have any signatures or anything this time. Um, real quick, um, Jackie, so we'll just make this number 20, whatever it is. Uh, we'll make it 21. What's, okay. It's a walk on. Okay. It's a walk on. I'm not going to show What's it your here. high dunes off the agenda? That's off the agenda. I got no, uh, no signatures. This is a piece um, that's on Hill Station Road. It's in Shinnecock Hills. It's this odd piece. Um, where old canoe place um, connects in Montauk Highway just to the south. Uh, it's this piece here. Uh, this uh, actually had a previous subdivision approval already in place, a final approval. I want to show the board here, the map. Oh, those nice trees. Yeah, well, and believe it or not, that, that area was all old. They're, most of them are dead from the pine. Uh, in fact, I mean, yeah. it's the pine infestation is this pine far east? It, it, it's west, all dead in there. Um, yeah, it's really? amazing. Mm. Uh, but it's a three lot subdivision. It's going to have one common driveway, the same plan that That's was. That's familiar. Yeah. Because they're odd shaped lots. Yeah, it's Nothing odd. Is, yeah. Um, but it's been a long time, so they had to start over from the beginning. Um, can so they reconfigure it any better? Than perhaps. That? It's a pre-application, so um, we'll take a look. Yeah, but um, this one, I'm going to recommend that we deem complete and schedule this one for July 27th, actually. And the title of it, Anthony? 32 Hill Station Road. 32 Hill Station Road. Is this archaeological sensitive area? It is. And they, obviously, the first time around, I had to go through the, the whole report. What's interesting, it's not in the cultural resources area um, okay. under the test. So in other words, if someone went to go in for a building permit today to go build on here, they wouldn't be subject to those uh, restrictions that were put in place. So it's interesting that it is archaeological, but not in the cultural resources area. Yeah. But I of mean, course, this will has be CPF looked at this at all? Just you know, coordinating I'm sure. with the sure. nation yeah. and everything. It'll it'll come out of my report, which I always say in there. If CPF yes. is interested, we'll okay. talk to them. Great. So when did you schedule it for? I'll do this one for July 27th because I misplaced this one. <laughs> okay, yeah. but miss yeah. Okay, so motion by Kate. A motion. Uh, second by George. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? Five in favor, two absent. 
Anthony, will you reach out to CPF just to explore it? Okay. Sure. Just so the board knows, I, Jessica was nice to give it to me. On Lewis Road, I do get, uh, they've been giving me updates uh, on what's taking place, what's happening. Are you um, doing a spreadsheet? So, well, sure. I haven't yet, but. Uh, it would I, be I, helpful to so us. I will do that. We went and visited as well uh, to mm -hmm. tour with Jessica. I'm um, going next week, actually. That was great. The construction too. of Thank the you. ponds was something that we were talking about watching. So if you could check that on the fine paper. Thanks. Claire, you're back. Now. I'm back. Too many projects. It's all the same thing. They all sound you're the same. You're doing so well. Everything, Everything was organized. And then you missed this one. I missed one. And we let these guys vote. They approved everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have Tesla and this, but it's like that. So yeah. I have the site plans. There's a bunch of them there. So well, we had some fire conditions. So this is to change the existing building, which is uh, 19,242 square feet, and uh, have it to be a motor vehicle dealership, which is a, a special exception in this zone. So uh, it is a type two action pursuant to SECRA. There was a public hearing on June 8th, and there was no comments received during the 10 day at the hearing or during the 10 day comment period. So the referrals I've given this to the applicants. Um, there was many comments from the fire marshal that just need to be addressed. Um, they're very specific to the use on the property and to the, the battery issues. Um, obviously there's batteries associated with these cars. So um, this sign is going to be Okay. So I'm going to, um, I'm not going to read the specifics. What is it? Yeah. So there has to be compliance with the uh, fire prevention. Yes. There might be a typo on page two. We're down by the key boxes. Um, just changing Hampton Bays to Southampton. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. I just cut and pasted their yeah, things. I got yeah. it. As a, thank you. I didn't even notice. Good. So the major issue with fire was this on page three, the, yeah. the dunk tank and the storage of the yeah, batteries. Mm -hmm. So I feel comfortable having them amend their plans, provide the fire marshal the requisite information, and having them come back and say that they recommend it with any equitable conditions, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the Town Architectural Review Board, uh, June 6th, indicated their approval for the project. Uh, town engineer. Um, so this, when this application was deemed incomplete, uh, complete, the town engineer had a checklist uh, that the applicant said that they were addressed prior to the hearing. They submitted additional plans that have been re-referred to them, and we haven't received uh, the town engineer's comments yet. So hopefully before the action deadline. We, we, we hit every, every box. Every box. The planning commission said that it was a matter of local determination. The health department said they had not received an application yet. There was no response to the CAC or no comments received from the DOT or the fire district to date. Um, so generally speaking, um, the application is in conformance with the special exception criteria. 
Um, I'll just just go through them if you want me to add any additional information over the next uh, couple of weeks. Just let me know. Um, but the use is in harmony. Um, the, obviously, there's car dealerships all over um, the strip, so in the HB. So the plot area is, is sufficient, which is B. C is that the use will not prevent the orderly and reasonable use of the use of properties. D is the compliance with the town master plan. E is that the use um, is not in, unsuitably near a church, school, or theater, or recreational area. Uh, F is the um, proposed use uh, is compliance with the standard. G is the access. There's no uh, proposed change in the access. There is existing cross access, which allows for this property to come to the intersection of flying points, and, and that is important. Um, so the standard is met. Uh, H is there's no change in the existing curb cut. I has to do with the parking. So the uh, parking requirement is 58 parking spaces. Obviously, there's a fully developed parking lot in the property. Uh, of 107 spaces. Um, of this total number, 25% will need to be customer parking, so I just recommend that they note that on the plan. There's two truck loading spaces and three handicapped spaces are proposed upon the requirement of the 58 required parking spaces. Um, there's no um, change to the buffers. There is existing buffers provided to the south and to the east to the residential properties. Additional plantings in the form of three foot high boxwoods, they're actually proposing that as shown on the site plan. So that won't need to be a condition of approval. Um, do you need help department approval? I can't remember. No, I'm not, sh I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know that the uh, uh, wastewater flow has changed at all. But if we need it, we'll get it. Okay. I just think. I, I don't we'll confirm that with the yeah. engineers. Okay. Just double I check. Imagine this would change. If anything, it might yeah. be a reduction in the flow. Joe Lombardi. Yeah. This yeah. guy's going to know a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need health department approval for the flow out of the building, but we do need a change of use. You have to file a change of use okay. with the health department. Okay. So at most, they would want maybe some additional structures. Structures, if yeah. that. Um, no, actually, the the flow by the from the uh, auto dealership is less, less than, than what was, was before. Yeah. Okay. We need, we need it for the car wash, though. We need it for the car wash. That's well, yeah, the, the, the car oh, wash, right, zero the discharge car wash. Car wash. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. But that would be a condition mm. of the approval. No, we should be after. Mm hmm. It shouldn't be a condition. Of Oh, it shouldn't be a condition of approval, yeah. I understand. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sure. We don't usually do it. That's right. It's yeah, just yeah. a heads up to you. I thought I was in um, West Hampton Beach for a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a heads up to you the if you need that before building that. permit. So. That's fine. Yep. Sorry. Okay. I'll yes. add that about the car wash, too, under the, mm -hmm. the wastewater. Okay. Um, can you describe how the batteries are, it says location of damaged batteries being stored outside? Because he wants, the fire marshal wants more info on it, so we'll get that to him. I, I would rather just Comply visually show it to you. Says, yeah. So we'll, we'll Yeah, I just wonder, to. are they in a container of That's some what we're going to find out. That's what we're going to oh, find I out. That's what we're going to provide. Okay. Not yeah, so okay. I'm wondering about it, but he's commenting on it from a public safety perspective of you know how uh, you know whether there's a fire risk but are there chemicals inside of that also that it would need to be contained in case of that'll all no be that'll all be issue. answered uh, it's, it's not a dodge well. i just don't want to give it so i want to give you an incorrect answer if you can answer it yeah, we're gonna um, when you do from the fire safety perspective and from the environmental um potential as far as containment you know, yes, yes exactly yeah. thank you appreciate that the, the one i did have one uh, it's a great, have, great source I'm, container. I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. So. I, I did have one point of information. I don't know. Did, did Suffolk County, did the DPW send you their non jurisdiction letter? Uh, I, I think you, you emailed me just emailed five minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> well, no, it just and seemed I didn't like. Open it. 
it just seemed like it's something that they would send to the municipality as well. But they well, you so what they oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So then the only other thing I had, uh, and thanks for getting through all this stuff, up the clear. The only other thing I had, can you show the map? Th this is something that the fire marshal said. Uh, the access drive in the northeast and southwest, so I'm getting a little bit turned around. I'll make sure that I've got the right directions of the building shall be designated as a fire zone. There. So the fire, that's no. fire lane. Yeah. Fire so zone. So what you have is essentially you have... Existing along this edge already. Yeah. A zone here. And then the fire marshal is proposing this whole side as well for... Which is fine. Because that's very easy to fight that, fight any fire in there. It's probably better than most... Uh, so just clear for access. Yeah, yep. but I mean, here, here's here's the issue that I have. Um, the site plan describes parts of the fire zone on the southeast side this of the side. building as loading zones, which is this side, right? As listed, labeled as existing loading zones. Yeah, parking in these areas shall be prohibited. Uh, I don't mind prohibiting parking there. But I've got to have a place to load and unload. Yeah. So, so just I just want to make there. sure that there's no prohibition against loading in that area. And it's, it's listed as existing crash. loading zone, and it's shown on the proposed site plan as a loading zone, but just in this small section. Mm -hmm. I, what uh, what I does he say? He, it's, it's, ambiguous. Say it's ambiguous. It's ambiguous. He says you're, parking. You're saying that stopping to load is parking. Is it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's no, my point. You want to be able yeah. to use that as a loading handle zone. that with signage. Yeah, no as parking. Loading, you know, right. loading zone. Yeah, with loading zone. No we just don't whatever. want it that we can't use it as yeah. a loading and I agree, zone. Tom, it must but be a fire he, zone. He's, creating an, an he's creating an ambiguity here. Because mm -hmm. he says parking these areas should be prohibited and required signage and pavements. What signage? I, I, I don't think I should be required. I don't think, unless you can show me some code section, I've got quite. An, uh, the ability more so than on most buildings to fight a fire here. I don't. I, I'll, I I'll stay parking out of here, but I, I, I have to load somewhere right. in the rear. Parking. Just say no parking. Sign it. Loading right. zone only. Right. Right. Okay, yeah. that's, that's fine. fine. Just that's fine. in the yeah. you know the traffic manual. The okay. MUTCP okay. has okay. signage for that. That's fine. We just no wanted parking to loading zone. Point out and clarify. Right. Okay. Based on his. Okay. Unless you're signing all the other areas with some kind of parking yeah. regulation. Nope. And, and only parking up against the building is really in the front. In the front. Right. 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 So it's like quite free to for fire management. What's, right. what's the right? What's the threshold for parking <laughs> versus loading? loading? Fifteen minutes. What's the activity. Like our <laughs> activities underway. I see. Okay. Hey, we're not designating parking here. That's why spaces. we have attorneys and cooler uh, <laughs> <laughs> budget. Right. But Generally, so why don't you have them no say no parking, loading allowed, or something like that, so there's no ambiguity on the side front? Can we do that? Can we do that? Yep. Okay, Claire. Where are you? It'll be on all pages. Okay. okay. So, um, about this. Loading zone, but no parking. Okay. 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 Oh, yeah. something like that. Oh, yeah. thanks. Only going on later. Oh, yep. perfect. Mm -hmm. That was my only comment. The signage. We also need to look at the signs. Yeah, please look at the signs. Yeah. We haven't seen them. We have an illuminated oh. sign. Okay. I, I believe that, for whatever it's worth, the uh, A or B was fine with that, right? That's, that's, yes. that's binding we, on you. We have to sign. Yeah, for sure. I think I remember it on one of those signs. We right? really reduced the. Uh, Trade dress. There's a lot of red yeah. in the beginning. Here's the, I think you have this in the packages. So this is the monument. Yeah. And then the ARB nice. said we had to put a street number here, oh, so yes. we'll put a street number on the okay. on the actual sign. I don't know if we need to just is put that a number. Is that the sign by the entrance? Yes, that will be the yeah, entrance that's sign. A, that's so a monument sign. Mm -hmm. okay. It'll be fairly small. And, the, and it's in the setback. Um, yes. So the rendering shows it in. The original location. It's being relocated to the little island okay. that's right at the entrance mm -hmm. where the. So you've got Montauk Highway here. You're mm -hmm. going to enter. It's being located right into here. Oh, I see. So the rendering shows it here, which doesn't Good. meet the setbacks. So we've moved it over here Perfect. and showing it at 26 or 28 foot Perfect. setback. That's good. So it's kind of right at the entrance and it marks okay. it. Okay. So we have that as a monument sign. And like I said, we have to add the number 
Mm -hmm. I don't know if we need the number and the street name. No, just, just, the just, number. The number. just the number. Okay, so we'll add the 54. And then you have the Tesla, which is. And what about that little T that's up there? That's also lighted? On the far Top side? corner of the building. Yes. It's in the corner. Can you have more than one sign? On so. a corner lot, you can have two, right? But mm -hmm. they're not they're a corner lot. Are they not? No. Um, one on the corner is, and they have two signs. Oh, they right, right. I'll just medical. want you to, I'll just ask Marge or whatever. Okay, yeah, okay. The, the team, the team, right? Well, it's about a good point. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or we could even we move the T over and make it part of, part of the that. Tesla that, word. That would be much better. That, that might be. Much yeah. better. Okay, might be we can better. consider I that. I actually thought it was nice to bifurcate them since it appears. Let's put both. And I made your own. We'll figure it out. But we can't have it, then we'll combine it because they want their logo, obviously. I think it makes more sense to combine it. Okay. So that, tes that Tesla word is also backlit at night, right? Correct. Yes. 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 They also have, in addition to that, you have a little T on the top, which is also backlit. So right. it's like a, yep. Once they have a, yeah. Kind of balance. So we'll make sure that it performs. Yep. If you have to put it together, we will. Where are you, Claire? Just the site plan standards, which um, have been addressed, you know, basically with some of the special exception standards. Um, so A talks about curb cuts, we've already talked about that. Of course the fire marshal requirements would have to be met. Um, and then B is the interior circulation and parking we talked about, the plantings we talked about. Um, e is no natural features, cultural features is not in, in the ecological pavements, the town engineer requirements will have to be met, lighting. Um, if there's any existing yeah. lighting, I haven't taken a peek at the lighting, but it should, it should be in conformance. Um, uh, do you want to say anything about the glare? Uh, this is not a big last area, which is unlike some of the other ones we have, so I'm not quite sure if you have any glare issues on this one. Okay, so I'll take any comments related to that out. Obviously, facades uh, approved, uh, drainage <coughs> systems. Uh, public utilities, uh, the water of course existing. This should be no public address system, that's fine. The AADAs, the three parking spaces proposed should be fine. I'm adding new language for some of conservation and obviously they're gonna have charging stations here so um, they're noted on the plans. Um, and of course uh, O is the cross access, which is existing. Architecture already addressed. It's not in the agricultural overlay district. And the final thing with the outdoor display, there's some parking, of course, it's been the 50 please, please seen. I'm just recommending that that not be displayed, just be used for car parking. Right, just car parking. Yeah, have to be, customers. I think it have to be 50 feet. Yeah. And I'm going to add, um, so we've the signage, you had some comments, I'll add those comments in there. Um, and then I'll have a special section of battery storage, battery mm -hmm. discussion, Whatever. address the fire marshal comments, and they're going to provide more information about battery right. storage for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Great. Great. So these can all be conditions of approval. I'm going to prep, prep one, okay. um, but we really need I'll the cottage to to your sign off and yeah. the fire marshal sign off. Yes. Okay. Right? That's what we're looking for. Sounds good. And the okay. information about the battery. Good. Right? Yeah. Anything else? Well, just on the signs also, whatever, tools. Yeah. Oh. I would yeah, take we'll that to you off. We'll find out about it. that as well. Yeah. Go back to them. Sort of hangs by itself somewhere. It doesn't make sense. Right. Okay. So, no action. And you know what? I must say, the last yep. time I was here on the public hearing, I was very, I was very, <laughs> was sort of, when you put the, the, Big battery storage the thing first, because I, I was supposed to go before that. Yes, I know. But I <laughs> Waited quickly, patiently. quickly, and I okay came to realize maybe it's a good idea that that hearing went first. It's like being <laughs> being the last right. of five children, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you know what I also wanted to say, John. The um, when you did the I think it was the Jack White, the Oldsmobile, the one further on County Road 39, when we put the parking in. And we got it lower so that the bushes in front camouflaged it. It was brilliant. It's the only one that you're the only one that ever did that. 
on 39. Is it, it's the Mercedes. Is it Mercedes? Oh, the Mercedes. Yes, yes, yes. The parking I know. is right. pitched low in yes, the front. Yes, Yep. And so that the yeah, hedges hide more. Hedges look yeah. beautiful. It looks great. That was the architect. No, it was a conversation it was me. with. No, and it, it was me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with it both down. of us. It was a nice synergy. <laughs> it, was right? a good, yeah. it was a good partnership. <laughs> Okay, so no action on this, Claire? No action. Okay, great. Thank you Thanks very much. Thanks, you want these back? Uh, back? These are yours. Oh. Okay. I was just playing Claire. Claire well, can have them. Okay. We'll leave one of them here. Thanks a million, folks. Thank you. Well. See you tonight, actually. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. What? Are you a player? I think this Thank you, Claire. title. Thanks. I'm not sure what this is, but I think I'll go with Captain. You don't? Okay, so I have my next one is 11. It's a completeness um, item. So I just want to ask you how you want to proceed with this application. How many do we have on the 27th? I think, did Anthony? We have four. 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 Yeah. I didn't add them yet. We have one. This wouldn't be for completeness for I'm hearing. One, two, two, three. This is going to have something other than completeness. Four. Anthony came on with a walk on. Oh, he did. So okay. that's 32 Hill Station Road, so that's four. Okay, we got four? Yes. That's okay. Anything I schedule can be on this one. No, I. I There are four. 103 may be scheduled, yeah. Maybe, yes. If Carl's okay, good. where are we put? This is, so this is on Spion River Head Road. Where are we? It's Eleven. number 11, I'm sorry. Okay, Delandro, Jeffrey Delandro. So in this instance, um, it's in the Aqua Protection Overlay District. They are um, proposing a building. It's had the pre-submission. Uh, upon review, it's noticed that the property can only clear 25%, where our code allows 50%. So they need to amend their covenants as others have done in the past when they're more restrictive than the existing code of the uh, CNRs. So they're asking for a covenant amendment besides proceeding with the site plan application. Um, in this case, I'd recommend that we do a coordinated review for CPRA. Pine Barrens Health Department. The Pine Barrens has to weigh in. Yes, so we'll do all of that. But when do you want to do the um, covenant amendment? It requires a majority plus one. Do you want to have a hearing? It does not require a hearing, but when would you want to do that? Well, wouldn't we want to get the referral back from the Pine Barrens Commission before we do that? We could do that. Logically? We're going to do a referral mm -hmm. at CICRA purposes, do you, or do you want to have a hearing on every, like do CICRA, then do a hearing on the covenant amendments. That's my question to you. I'd rather have more information yeah. before voting on the covenant amendment. Okay, so do it together. Have the site plan and the hearing. Here we oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So then the action today would be to coordinate secret for this purpose. I have everything necessary for that. Okay, so okay. you want a motion to coordinate? Yes. Your resolution says it's hearing. even incomplete. Yes, because I didn't have the town engineer information, and I actually still don't. So we'll but I, what I'm going to do instead of deem it complete is coordinate seeker, and if we still don't have town engineer, then I would deem it incomplete at that point mm -hmm. prior to that. So we'll coordinate. You sure you want to make that extra step? Yeah. Ste okay. Yeah, we can do that. I'm sorry. Yes. No, I'm just wondering. It's an older covenant. It's an older covenant. Most of them so do it doesn't. The yeah, it doesn't have it. This okay. is 19. Before even, I think it was 90 something. Yeah, the 90s, I think, is when. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that it says majority plus one only. The I older covenant is more restrictive than what would be. No, the newer covenants always require hearing. Public hearing. Because mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. would be interested in the neighbor. Obviously, there's no neighbors, like houses, neighbors in this instance. Um, but uh, we'd obviously just notify everybody. So if you're comfortable, we can coordinate CICRA on this case. Yes, so okay. you need a motion for that, yes, right? Yes, please. So a motion to coordinate CICRA. 
I need a motion. All motion. Motion by Kate, second by Jose. Tom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions, five in favor, two absent. Good. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Um, I have two more. One is 103 County Road 39. Sorry, what number that is. 15. Tell you. 15. Uh, this is the Southampton developers, ugh, developers piece of property. I don't know if everybody remembers that application. It's the one that immediately to the west of um, Burger King. And it was a proposal to do a 15,000 square foot medical yeah. office building back then. Um, it has since ex way expired. Um, so the applicant has come back forward with a pre submission request on this application. Well, next to the cemetery, right? Farrell has a sign up there right. yeah. developing it. Yeah. Medical offices or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this would be to schedule pre submission conference. Do you want me to take a look at the site plan real quick? Yeah, sure. Of course, that County Road 39 study was never adopted. Right. Did you sit on that, Tom? Which one? County Road 39 study. The corridor study. Not the corridor. That County Road 39. The access management. Oh, not the access management. We did so many. I know. I know. I sat on it for two years, and nothing oh, happened. Oh, I know the one you're talking about. You like know. Yeah, from like 2006 or whatever. Who was yeah. here in <laughs> Yeah. Claire. Yeah. Oh, I was not here. I was he here. here. <laughs> In a different role. I was here too. I believe you here. Not here. Not here, not here, here, here but downstairs. Okay, so now you can identify yourself, please, Sorry. for the record. I'm Carl Benacasa, 860 Montauk Highway, Waterloo. Good to see you all. Good to see you. So. Sorry, Virtually the same. Is that what you're saying? It's exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. Virtually the same. The only difference, I want to note something <coughs> quickly. Uh, in the narrative on the application and in what was submitted, there is a mistake as to parking. Did we have anything on this? Yeah, I note the parking in the, the resolution. So, we yeah, have I have the resolution. Yeah. Just one second. <coughs> Too, so don't lose that. Hey, can you identify yourself? Sure, please? Andrew Kelly with VHB Engineering in Hop Hop, New York, project manager. So 103 County Road 39 is a 2.5 acre parcel located uh, right on County Road 39, just to the west of the parcel, which is contains the Burger King right now. Proposed as a two-story building with a shared lobby and a total uh, uh, total of 15,000 square feet. Can we? I'm sorry, I gotta speed this up. <laughs> We're just gonna set the pre-submission, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, we'd like to hear about it. It's it's an important application. Well, you have other. You haven't touched on other people's applications yet. I'm just concerned that you it's might. Ten minutes of four. Yes, we have time. Fifteen thousand square feet of office Thank space. You. Uh, the site would contain a parking lot. I just want to note this one correction for the record. One is that it notes in the um, report or on the agenda that it's uh, 62 standard parking spaces, four standard accessible spaces, and eight land bank spaces. What's actually being proposed. Uh, and I just asked this be amended, is 70 standard spaces, 25 land bank spaces, four standard accessible spaces for a total of 99 spaces. 75 standards, 70 installed. 70 installed standard, 25 land banked, and four installed standard accessible for a total of 99 spaces. And then we'd have to have five. Have so 80 spaces. It would have to have 80 spaces. It would have to have five ADA spaces. Yes, five ADA spaces. But you only have four. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to so post a fifth one. An ADA space. Just so you know. 
All right, well, we're between the 76 and 100. We'll, we'll double check that, but we are between the 76 and 100 provided. 100 at 99. When you go over 80, you need, you need right. one per 20. Mm -hmm. So you're over 80. Okay. You're at 99 required, one right? Yes. Space. Okay. Yes. That's it. That's okay. just an aside, and we have a whole process to go through. We'll just be careful of the uh, Okay, so again, this was, this was, uh, went all the way through the process in 05. It was never constructed. Given the length of time that's been, that's elapsed since then, we are starting, uh, starting all over. Starting all over again, right? Because you have essentially a new board. Exactly. Okay. And this is one building and... 115,000 square foot office space. And uh, it's going to be medical. Space. Yes. So we're setting a pre-submission conference for, um, instead of August 10th, we have room on July 27th, and I'd be fine with August that being 10th. scheduled. You would prefer August, August 10th. 10th? Not, not, do you have three on the 27th? We have four on the 27th. No, three. This was going to be the fourth That's one. Be the fourth. Anthony put one on, we have a walk-on, and he scheduled it for July 27th. Yes, we have. So Anthony's with the, was the third, correct? Oh, okay. so we have Church of God Galilee. No. No, no, no. That's just for the day meeting. That's not a hearing. Okay. <clears throat> well, we can do that if we can get all the information by then. You know, we we're, sure. it's a blank slate right now for us. That shouldn't be a problem. So we have a full we have a full information required for pre-submission, including site plans and elevations. And we want renderings now, by the way. That's a new requirement. Renderings? Mm hmm Claire, have you made that known to people? Yes, when they submit for their site plan applications. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so um, oh, what does the back cross access lead to? Is that linked to anything behind it? One coming off, just out of curiosity. There's cross access there, right? Is no, it, is besides that going to um, Burger King, this That's does Burger have King cross access, but this will not because it's the fire district. It's an fire. Yeah, he's just got. Fire. He's showing two. If I'm listening, if I'm reading correctly, one from the. Burger King parking lot in front and the, the rare one which doesn't really seem to go into that landscape. I thought we worked out some complicated cross access here. Through yeah, the that's what it looks like. Yeah. It's the fire district is not allowing cross access. Okay. Well, well we're not back. through them, but right. that's a condition that may have changed Burger since two thousand and five. Yeah. Yeah. Or there may be other yeah, I mean, so the, the front, front, you can the see front one the could happen, in that area but I believe Burger King one is very specific yeah. to the rear. Right. To the rear, and then I, I thought we had worked something out. Dennis, do you remember any of yeah, that? I, I, Didn't I thought we had that brought back, that it came through with the Burger King application. Yeah, we have Burger King. King. So we at least Burger we can Kings. hook this in. Yes. Well, no, if you look at it, there's one at the front, and the other one at the back, which lines up with the wooded area. The w yeah, it expired, so this is brand yeah, new. Well, this lines up with Burger King. Yeah. There no, used to be a whole plane. I can't see what you're talking It lines up with the Burger King property, but really with the wooded area. Is this, do you have this up there? No. It doesn't link to anything. Can Dennis see it? You can't. He can see the aerial, right? Can you see the aerial? It's very tiny. Anyway, it was just a question. We'll, we'll cross All right, we'll out. work it out, Dennis. Yeah, so just yeah uh, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we have the, uh, the, the cross whole plan drafted in conjunction with the Burger King application mm -hmm. that included this site. I mean, you definitely want to try to get this traffic out uh, at North Sea Road. Yes. Yeah. And not on, yeah. Okay. Yep, cross access. Okay. So good. Excellent. Okay, so we're scheduling, uh, it's complete, and we're scheduling a public hearing for July 27. Motion by? Is it a public hearing or pre-submission? No, pre-submission. Pre-submission. Pre yeah. pre okay. 
Pre submission. Motion by Kate. <laughs> Second by George. All in favor? I put five in favor. Uh, two absent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a long time. Yes. That's that frequent. Okay. Claire, are you ERA? T ERA? I am. So we have another, another pre submission. Brand new application. This is immediately adjacent to what I have up there. God, there's a lot of development. Uh, to yeah. the existing Tortorella piece of property uh, with the car wash in the rear. And uh, they're proposing a uh, mixed use three buildings um, in this highway business zoning district. For commercial? For commercial, yes. With Lowell uses loud in the HB zoning district. So three buildings, wow. as you can see. Mm. They're not special trade content, right? Some they could be, yes, yeah, they could be. Um, do you want to see it more? Soon? Yeah. Is it the same owner as the uh, adjacent to yes. the west? It's yes. like a similar design there. Yes, it is uh, Tortorella. It Tortorella. Is. Yes. Thanks. So I received the elevation. It's one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, yeah. I, there's lots of time. Uh, therefore, I recommend the, I originally written it to say we need elevations, um, but we can schedule this for August 10th with uh, the boards and boards. And their renderings? There's no rendering. I'm not requiring renderings at the pre-submission stage. Oh, I see. If, uh, if they have them, great. But okay. certainly, yeah, definitely yeah. for side plan. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll just rec recommend that they have So that. this is a proposed warehouse. What's the limit of the square footage here? 15,000 square feet. So this is in violation of the code by having three buildings all total above that. So they total 29,000 square feet. And oh. can you repeat what the total allowable is? 15. 15. 15. 15. So they're way over. They know that. Who's representing this application for? Uh, David Lamartin, Jr. <coughs> so they have to go to ZBA? They yeah. would, yes. Yeah. That's very, I mean, that's nearly double. Mm -hmm. That's. So we I mean, would we say that we want them to go to ZBA before the pre-submission conference? Just, I mean. Well, the pre-submission conference would help you uh, elicit like a, a detailed list of the issues, right? Mm. So I do issue, recommend that's that you go through that process. Mm -hmm. It doesn't commit you to anything, um, but it can get you, it could be become your ZBA report. But why do we even have to entertain it if it violates code to the extent that it does? Why do we even have to process it? Couldn't at the counter you say sorry? Because it doesn't require. Um, Compliance to the code to come to pre-submission, just like if somebody needs just like mm. little no clock area variance or no setback variance. No clock starts. No, no, no. clock starts, mm -mm. or does it? No. That pre-submission is not an important. Yeah, yeah, it's pre-submission. I mean, so you, as okay. the chair, I guess so you could limit the time that we spend on that. <laughs> I'm just curious. There's a little thin strip between this property and the one to the east. Was that? Oh was yes, that? that was the un. Was that the yeah. no man's land? What is that? Or was that on the this other? This one? Yeah. This is a site. Oh, was that the stop and shop that was had that no man's land? Th this this strip. one right here, the one that's yeah got yeah. all the uses in it. Well, that's that little yeah, garage, that? maybe. That's so it's a. Uh, I don't know what the CEO says, but they have come before the planning board in the past to ask for a special exception for a special trade contract. And because of the width of the property, it makes it problematic. Yeah. 
So the, yeah. the blue roof on the right there, that's the Long Island Cares um, outpost, is that right? Or am I orienting myself incorrectly? Uh, this is the, was the IGL? IGHL in front, yeah. and then Long Island Cares in Cares. back, and that's then awesome. yeah. the, this parcel, and then there's <coughs> Tortorella and the car wash. Is this is Tortorella in the car wash. And then, I the, see. And then yeah. the, best, the, the best application to the left of that. To the left of that. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Can you just zoom out so we get to get a yeah. bird's eye of the whole situation here? Is that helpful? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. okay. So are they hoping to get a, a variance for 29,000 square feet and, and three buildings? I would guess that they would they would submit for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're setting a pre-submission conference for August 10th. Motion. Okay. Motion by Kate, <coughs> second by second. George, all in favor? Opposed abstentions, five in favor, two absent. Um, Fidoe is off, the number 19, and then I have just one add-on, which is the Bridge Petroleum property. That's the um, convenience store in East Quag. It's gotten an um, amendment to their ZBA application, and therefore they're going to amend their CICRA. And um, the ZBA has asked whether you'd want to be lead agency. And uh, based on the past and your previous determination, um, I think I've written a resolution that says yes, that you want to be designated lead agency. In so the name of this application is? Bridge Petroleum. Our Bridge Petroleum? The convenience store, the Bridge station in the East Quad. Yeah, thank you. Is this the one that's been sitting at the CBA all this time? Mm -hmm. They have amended their application to retrofit the existing building that was the place yeah. to be a convenience store. It's about 1,100 square feet. Little, little taking little away the gas station portion of it? Yeah. No. Uh, no. Taking away the car. Uh, car. Yeah. So well, the that's the way it was. It, so it's the same situation. They're using the existing building rather than rebuilding. To be a larger so, building. Uh, so we'd approve it to be a large and to put a bigger building and have all the turning lanes there for the yeah, gas. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. they're just leaving it as is and going to complete the repair building into a convenience store mm -hmm. and associated use. So they plan to reuse the gasoline pumps, right? Gasoline pumps as is, yes. As is. But we can require that that building be dispersed um, by. Well, there's some issues there, right? Do they have the, yeah, the old, old issues we had with trucks, delivery trucks coming in and going and stuff I like that. I thought we were lead agency before. You are, so if this, the ZBA is considering this a new application. So we have to consider it a new application. Yes, exactly. And then you would so do we have to retire the old application? Do we have to formally end that so that it's not, because I'm confused. Right. So you are there's a ZBA action now, and based upon the information you're be, you're going to be given, this BAA and plans, you will consider seek again. Mm -hmm. If you new application. Agency. No, yeah. but my question is, what do we do with the old application? Uh, that you're Legally. just acting on the application the ZBA has been submitted, and if you needed more information, you will be asking the applicant. No, I understand. That doesn't answer my question. My question is, what do we do with the old application that we went on for a long time, that sat at the ZBA for a long time? Do we formally have to end it? Do we make a motion to, do they withdraw it? You don't have a site plan. You never did a site plan on this. This has only been a pre-submission. No, no, no. I, I understand this. That's so they should question. formally withdraw the application. They should formally that's withdraw. That's no longer being considered. That's yeah. that no should formally withdraw. An act of well, I'm not sure there's anything to withdraw. Is what is that what you're saying? Because we no did secret. We did a whole 
Right, w which secret is different than actually having, you know, a formally submitted application before you took lead right. agency as a coordinator. Yeah, lead agency. Right, you yeah. took lead agency as a coordinate uh, during coordination, but right. you never actually considered, correct me if I'm wrong, you never actually considered the full application. The site plan application. The site plan application. Well, right. not this one, but you considered. Did we consider the full site? Oh, you never did. So okay. you've only been it's acting in, in your role as secret lead agent. So there's really nothing for them to nothing withdraw for them before to you withdraw. in terms but of a we, full real site plan. Okay, so we deal with this right, right. from the get-go. So just yeah. really coordinating a secret in a different site plan, on a different application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So their revisions caused the ZBA to kick it back to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. did we vote on this? Did we lead we did. agency? No. Motion. I'll make a motion. By Kate, second by George. All in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions, five in favor, two absent. So we are lead agency on this property. <sighs> well, you did all of this so that you can be away. I know, someday I'll have a vacation. Thank you so much. Thanks, Claire. Enjoy. Who is Enjoy on tonight? Time, have a good time. Jeff. Yes. Are you um, Ali Huffnagel? Yes. Alec. Any reports for us? Yes, I do. So number three. One little Noyak Road. The, uh, we have an application for a two lot subdivision. Uh, it was seen by the board uh, and also uh, uh, performed a public hearing uh, back <coughs> on April 27, 2023. Uh, let me pull it up for you. So this two, two lot, uh, proposed two lot subdivision uh, is approximately 2.2 acres, 97,359 square feet. Uh, it currently has uh, an existing two story, one family dwelling with basement, one car garage, first and second story deck, shed, and four foot fence. Um, property is located within the aquifer protection overlay district as well as the agricultural overlay district. Um, as per the records, this lot, uh, which was also presented by the applicant, this lot um, used to be two lots uh, on a old 1981 tax map. And I'll show you through our historic map what I'm referring to. There was also uh, a lot line modification performed um, without the benefit of the planning board, from my understanding, uh, which took over this triangular piece and added on to the larger piece, uh, which is the subject property today. Uh, so they, it was a six lot subdivision? So it's not necessarily a subdivision, at least if it was a subdivision, it's not one that we have recorded with the, uh, with the town planning board or approved by the town planning board. But it's numbered three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's numbered, but there's no history regarding the actual subdivision. Uh, it predates uh, the town or and or the planning board. So there's no real history regarding the, uh, this, this particular area. I assume there was a subdivision of a larger piece at some point. That looks it. You know, uh, there are lots created. And it's and essentially it's just this general area, actually. You know, it's kind of tough to see. Uh, but if you, if you notice, all the other surrounding lots are not numbered similar to these four lots. Huh. That's strange as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did strange. some digging, trying to find some you know, hidden subdivision, but nothing came up, of course. Um, and again, they added the uh, triangular piece here at a later date, I believe 2001. Yes, I believe 2001. So the applicant who owned three and six? Correct. The added those two pieces? Yes. Uh, they merged. 
they merged because it was held in the same name. Uh, and then obviously uh, added on this last piece here, um, which is what uh, is the new configuration of the existing lot. These lots are still considered to be described property, not necessarily associated with the subdivision, although the historic planning map shows it uh, differently. Um, but there is no record of a subdivision associated with those, the, all four of those lots. Mm. Uh, so the tax, it's, no tax records? Or? No, just a just, uh, 1981 tax map, which shows these four lots. Uh, and now I can actually bring that up too. Council, is that odd? <laughs> I mean, it seems unusual, but... It's very unusual. I didn't make the attachment. Uh, this is the proposed subdivision standard plan. Oops. Yeah, I'm rotating it. Okay, so that doesn't, okay. There we go. There go. All right, so there's one house up, up, and then this lower parcel is. So there is an existing structure, as I mentioned, along with the pool um, as part of the site plan review of the subdivision. Uh, it looks like there's an encroachment of the driveway uh, to the north, the northwest, uh, as well as some encroachments with the fencing there. Um, referrals were sent out, um, and if you refer to the report, I'll quickly go over some of the comments we received. Uh, we received comments from the fire prevention, uh, the Division of Fire Prevention. Uh, their comments were pretty standard uh, in their recommendations. Uh, proposed lots accessible to uh, via a Little Noyak Path, uh, street addresses, and driveways shall, compl uh, some shall comply. Um, referrals were also sent out to the town engineer. Uh, nothing specific uh, really stands out, but uh, the town engineer just mentioned. Um, Number two, lot two shall take access to Little Noyak Path or New, uh, Noyak Path uh, within 50 feet of the property corner at the intersection of the two roads. Lot uh, two, you said? Yes, lot two, which is the one at the corner. On the corner. Uh, which intersects. Uh, and both roads, I uh, want to make, uh, make sure I mention, are uh, trustee roads. Is there water up there? There are no water. No water. No water. Uh, it is an aquifer protection overlay district, so uh, as you can see that uh, lot number two is pretty uh, vegetated, completely vegetated and wooded, uh, and based on the configuration or the lot size and lot area, uh, 48,947 square feet as well as the 48,412 square feet will require 50% or be restricted by 50% um, allowable clearing. clearing. Well, and it says nearest water source is in excess of 5,300 feet to the first proposed lot. It's mm -hmm. a long distance. That's yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but I believe the uh, health department, or the water authority actually, still requiring it. Mm -hmm. um, They're requiring a hydrant? Mm -hmm. I don't subscribe to that. Okay. <laughs> I've told that a lot. I've seen it a lot. Okay. <laughs> So at the, at the final application stage. Well, we'll, we'll right. whatever recommendation we get, whether it, it'll be a wet, uh, a, um. a So no comments from the uh, Bridgehampton Fire District. Uh, no, uh, it was referred to the Southampton Trail Advisory. Um, they also saw there was no real trail uh, implications on this property at, at a certain time, at the current time. Uh, it was also referred to the Conservation Board uh, and I'll read through their comments real quickly, um, which is on page five. Uh, as the forest, forest tract, uh, which will be impacted by the proposed two, uh, two residential lot subdivision, is partially cleared and developed, located in Aquifer Protection Overlay District, uh, the entirety of the site disturbance associated with the shed, garden, pool, equipment, and access path needs to be shown on the survey together with revised clearing calculations. Uh, if the clearing 
on proposed lot one exceeds allowable limit as per 33067, the applicant should be required to reclaim and revegetate a sufficient amount of the area to, be, to bring the lot into compliance. Uh, the required uh, clearance standard for proposed lot two uh, needs to be noted on the subdivision map, and as well as in order to preserve community character and scenic corridors along the roads, uh, the map needs to be revised to provide for a conservation easement uh, extending 25 feet from Little Noack Path and 50 feet from Noack Path. Uh, the driveway and fence encroachments, which I mentioned earlier as well, uh, along the northerly lot lines need to be addressed. And the survey needs to ad identify the existing fence heights and note uh, whether the, fen the fence line will, be needed, uh, will need to be modified to comply with 330-109-A1, 2, and 3. And lastly, to, pro uh, to prevent interference with wildlife movement and avoid risk of wildlife injury, all fence lines should be located outside of natural uh, vegeta vegetation areas, which are, are being slated for protection to comply with 33067. Can you modify that language a little bit? Because like mm -hmm. outside of the natural vegetation area could be at the roadside, and I think they're sure. intending that it be to the edge of the clearing area, right? Yes, essentially, okay. yeah. So, so, it, uh, so that it borders the clearing. So um, it borders the clearing area. The clearing line, right? yes. <laughs> so I include that. So I do have something similar to that in my recommendations, which is going to be referral. number it's number three. Okay. In my recommendations, which I do state that as well. So. Great. I'll specify. I don't know. How, how do we modify the language? Uh, Carl, do you want to come up and identify yourself as the representative for the application? Carl Bernicasa, 860 Mount Duck Highway, Waterman, New York, So concerning that, uh, although that was a recommendation from the Conservation Board, it also is one of my recommendations as well. So I'll modify it uh, in my recommendation so that it uh, specifies outside of the uh, clearing limits or the established clear clearing limits. We're clarifying the language of the recommendation because as it's stated, it could be it's vague. You right. could fence in the entire property line, which is not the intent of that right. comment. <laughs> okay. So I'll jump to my comments. Um, Number one, it's, uh, the application does require a variance. Uh, the uh, area zone CR80, uh, the um, proposed lots uh, will effectively have an average of 40,000 square feet for each lot, uh, a little bit over, over that. Uh, so they are going to be required to go to uh, ZBA for lot area. Um, so I do make mention uh, of that in my first recommendation. Uh, this report itself will serve as uh, uh, referral, a uh, referral report to the ZBA uh, for any future variances, uh, as well as uh, them having to meet the requirement for CR80, uh, the 80,000 square feet uh, for lots one and for lots two, which is uh, point number two in my recommendations. Uh, the subject parcel is also located within the Act for Protection Over District, so I'll reiterate uh, both lots will be required to meet the 50% um, clearing requirement. Uh, there is an attached which I'll show you. There's an attached um, sketch which does state that there's about 47% 40 uh, disturbed area on it on the uh, proposed lot, which I'll bring up for you. So the lot it's to be developed is already cleared 47%? Uh, this is not a survey, so uh, it wasn't included as part of the submission, so I'm not sure where the calculation came from. I'm assuming that's the case. No, I, I, I it's, they're talking about the prime soil disturbance. I think as far as vegetation goes, it's pretty much. It looks pretty much. Uh, it, so the, the lot one, not necessarily. Lot two, for sure, uh, is fully vegetated. Yes. Um, well, lot one is. Right, that one is disturbed. So it, essentially, that's what I'm referring to oh, okay. uh, regarding any disturbance on the property. So we have to clarify exactly what uh, the um, existing clearing is uh, for lot one, and if uh, any revegetation yeah, will be required for lot one. Um, I did skip over the comments from the public hearing, so I'll make sure I state that for the record. Um, the public hearing was held. Uh, as I stated, on April 27, 2023. Uh, the comments received on page three of the report. Uh, we had comments from Rosemary and Robert. I'll give it a shot. Uh, per 
Perkia, Perkia, residing at uh, 622 Noyak Path, as well as Helena uh, Rocos, uh, residing at 596 Noyak Path. Uh, we did end that public hearing with a 30 day written comment period, uh, as there was some public interest on that. Uh, so the concern was uh, the concern that the uniqueness of the area uh, with farmland and vistas will be impacted as part of the, uh, 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 the approval of the subdivision uh, and believes majority of the properties uh, within the general area of the proposed subdivision are two acre properties or more. Uh, the intent of the upzoning that occurred in the, 19, in the 90s uh, was to prevent overdevelopment in the aquifer overlay district and ag overlay district. Uh, so we received those comments which were for the most part uh, similar in nature, but the surrounding area, uh, as I noted in the description, uh, is comprised of um, undersized lots uh, and the oversized lots in terms of uh, the requirement for CR80, uh, 80,000 square feet and, and lot area. I would add yes. that comment that it was, when it was up zoned to two acres, it was because it was an algorithm for protection overlay. Mm -hmm. yep. I would put that in the comment that we're going to send to the ZBA as a sure. referral. <clears throat> and do we know, just as an aside question, <clears throat> the history of those two little pieces that were added, when they were, why that happened, yeah, and they, when it was done? They did it on their own without benefit of the planning board, and you can see portions of the neighboring lot where, if you go back to it, yeah. they kind of traded a little trade space. The, the health office. department maps do not line up. So that neighbor, lot five, is going to need uh, some approvals from this board if they ever want to develop mm -hmm. lot five because the health department map still has both of these lots, or all three of them. Isn't there a there. house on five? No, no. it's vacant as well. It's it's right. Four, four has a house. Four yes. has a house and three <coughs> has a house. Correct. <coughs> So they, this was bef well before my client purchased this, there was this sort of land swap. And you can see it was the black line that became the red line. Um, so who owns five? Five is actually five is Helena. One of the, uh, one of the comments, yes. Spoke, yeah. She was here at the, uh, for the public hearing and she spoke as well. Uh, and it looks like she had recently purchased it in 2022. Yeah. We are using the services of the same surveyor uh -huh. who has had discussions with them about it probably would be easiest if we did this all together. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. might be added to this application at some point. They don't need the variance, though. We do. No, you right. need the variance. That's right. I mean, it's yeah. It is a very special. Yeah, it's a location. Uh, yeah, it is. <coughs> Overlooking the farm fields, it's just quite beautiful. And uh, the R80 zoning was because of the APOD and. Variance application is uh, it's submitted, and we're waiting on a date. Anything so else? really, the Sorry. the recommendation that you're saying to put in was just to remind the ZBA uh, as they're considering this variance application that there's a good intent behind the R80 zoning. The R80 zoning, exactly. and again, here's another one <coughs> where maybe CPF gets involved in the Aquifer Protection Overlay District and Ag? Uh, not necessarily sure. Maybe with lot number five, since it sounds like they may have some mm -hmm. uh, um, some hurdles uh, with getting their lot developed. Um, or would your client consider, you know, not subdividing it and dedicating a portion to the town? I, does CPF take... Are they doing easements at this point without you could, title? There's yeah. actually an expedited subdivision process if you are a, a two-lot subdivision and one lot's going to CPF. But we'd still mm -hmm. need the variance, right? Uh, arguably, yes, to, to legalize your better, existing structure. I'd, I'd feel more comfortable recommending that the ZBA approve that variance if we knew that that was oh, the yeah. intent rather than, you know, I mean, basically the rules are in place for a reason and mm -hmm. they didn't pull the trigger quick enough to get... <laughs> this subdivision before people realized that this area needed to be protected for right. the aquifer mm -hmm. benefit. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like a good idea. Um, 
I'll make sure I include that uh, verbiage mm -hmm. uh, language in the uh, report so that uh, ZBA receives it that they can uh, include as far as their uh, review of the application. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the encroachment of the driveway would have to be addressed. Uh, cause I, uh, my understanding is the existing house uh, will stay in place and uh, there's no intention of actually uh, demolishing it. Uh, and then lastly, um, compliance with the town engineer and fire prevention comments uh, and then a requirement for uh, Suffolk County Health Department approval at the final application stage. Um, what about the fire suppression? <coughs> so the fire hydrants? So yes, uh, the fire prevention didn't make those comments. Refer back to them for you. They H3. want a hydrant? They want, uh, let's see. Yes. So uh, usually it's a hydrant right. within 1,000 feet. So this is 5,000 feet? 5,300 5, feet. So yeah, I'll specify that in the in the comments. Yeah. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Do you have the, a, the APOD percentages on the top of your head? Yep, uh, for? 50%. Whatever, they, whatever the lot sizes are. Uh, 30 to 60 is 50. Uh, oof. 20 to, mm, I believe it's 15 to 20. 15 to 30, or 29,099 uh, is 25. 35, 35. What's 85? Yeah. I'll put, let me pull it up. There's, there's a reason I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know off the top of my head either. Do the percentages? Yeah, well, if you take the, if there's concern about the aquifer protection over the district, we're talking about clearing. If we can covenant that clearing will rem remain consistent regardless of lot size. I'm okay, one one to fifteen seventy five, fifteen to thirty sixty. So 30. right now they can clear twenty five percent because the lot size, the total lot size is, is uh, ninety ninety two thousand. So right now twenty five percent of that would be it's allowable clear. Twenty ten eighteen twenty three thousand square feet. And what I'm saying is maybe we could, I could speak with the client about not changing that, even though it's two lots. You understand, and then the, the intent of the aquifer would be right. They get what they want, and you're still acknowledging that. And you're you know. and you're abiding by the intent of the upzoning and right. the POD. I like that you're being creative about it. Good so. Mm -hmm. You want to investigate that, or I will, the, I'll investigate that and get back to you. Okay, absolutely. So I'll include that. Any other questions? Good report, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All Anything right, so more, Carl? Any other questions? We'll just have to resolve. I mean, the fire, we have to be guided by whatever the fire oh, absolutely. <coughs> department says. They may have a, want a, um, a yeah. well or a cistern, a cistern, cistern or something. Yeah. A cistern. It's 5,300 feet sounds like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. For essentially, what is the addition of one block? Right, yeah. But still, we need fire protection in these places. Um, I did have a comment just quickly. This on the last uh, in the site description. You note that it may have happened prior to the adoption of zoning, the merger, right? But we also we know it that it, they were separate on the tax maps in the eighties. So I that was that was the question. What made you think that it could be the merger could have happened prior to zoning if we have tax maps from? 80s showing they were separate. Well, we don't have record of even the merger. Right? We don't have record. There of are no records. Yeah. So uh, it may. I'm not sure. I can remove that. That's yeah. fine. I would just like that removed because I think the, the fact that the only thing we're going off is the tax maps and there was a 1981 tax map that showed them separate. But sure. then let's just say that they, there were no tax maps. But I mean, that's a fact, right? Yeah, that's a yeah, fact. Just, so I think we should include that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the first tax map that shows up is The first tax map that shows them as one. 2001, Yeah, the 90s. Oh, okay. And the one before that showed them as two, which was 1981. The one with the zoning have been adopted. 
the, the upzoning, upzoning was in 82, 83? 84. 84. Mm. And we have no April idea 40. why the two lots were merged. No, well, this was well before my client's ownership. There's nothing in the chain of title. Kind of there's no thing. chain of title. That's strange. Mm. There's because a chain of title, but there's nothing. Right. I mean, what about the three, four, five, six? The numbers. It looks like a subdivision. We couldn't find a map. Yeah. Yeah. I did some research. I couldn't find anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So interesting that this yeah. you know, yeah. still yeah. is that. that and generally, there's like a gene, uh, genealogy, right? Which changes the tax map numbers, so yeah. we can date back to where the original parcel was and what map it might have been. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I even tried the uh, number six, number five, which is not even a part of this application. <laughs> right. Nothing. Right. Huh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, so I'll include that. Um, <clears throat> so as amended, and I'll send out the amended version of the report, because we're still waiting for ZBA to see your application as well. So as amended, uh, move to adopt this reapplication report. You'll send us a, an amended version? Absolutely. <clears throat> Okay, motion. All motion. Motion by Kate, second by Tom. All in favor? Opposed, abstentions, five in favor, two absent. Uh, if you don't mind, I do have one walk on, and it's actually one of Carl's. Mm -hmm. We can cut it loose. Okay, uh, hang on. Let me just check. Sure. <coughs> don't you have one more? I have one more. National. Goblins. Which is going to be a little bit of a discussion. Okay. Uh, but uh, this one's Carl's too. So okay, so this is number that. 23, a walk on, and it's called 77 Turtle Cove uh, LLC. Turtle Cove LLC. Okay. Uh, and this one is a proposed two lot subdivision as well. Uh, somewhat similar. Uh, these lots uh, were part of a 19, uh, let me see, yeah, 19, a 1938, yeah, Southampton Shores, Southampton Shores uh, section one, um, proposed lot A, I'll bring that up for you to, to view as well. Proposed lot A uh, is 19,583 square feet. Uh, proposed lot 2 uh, is 19,417 square feet. What's the zoning? Zoning here is R15. Um, R15. So, yeah, so, conforming. so as they are uh, yes. uh, uh, um, laid out, they are <coughs> conforming. Uh, won't require a ZBA, uh, not even from a, um, a lot width standpoint. Um, the This parcel as well, was merged, um, I'm not sure about the date of the merger, but it was merged and held in the same name, uh, which is what triggered the merger. Uh, but they are electing to uh, subdivide it back to the original uh, lots of that uh, 1938 Southampton Source Section 1 subdivision. Uh, so right now, this is a pre-application, uh, and we are uh, deeming this complete and scheduling a public hearing for August 10th. So Turtle Cove Drive is the same road. It's labeled the same road. Circles it circles around. Circles around. around. Yeah. Could you show the aerial? Yes. Yeah. So right now it's a through lot, and they're gonna. It's an idea. Exactly. Split around. it in the middle. And Can it was you show two where? Lots on the old 38 subdivision. Correct. 77 and 80, I believe, or 87 and 70. Uh, and right what's the road to the um, North North Sea Road? North Sea Road and. And there's no way that road here. Okay. North Sea Road's right here. <laughs> gotcha. So lot 77 and 88 on the, that old subdivision map. The entire subdivision is still intact. Right. Except for a few lots, if you can see, just to the south of it. Did you say it was a 77 lot subdivision? No. 37. 37. 37. Oh, no, yes. This is lot 77 and 88 of that large subdivision. Yeah. Southampton Shores subdivision. Right. Which I believe also extends on the other side yes. of the road, too, yeah. So they got merged at some point and now 
No, they would have subdivided. Then they would have subdivided under the same line as the old map. Redraw the same map. Mm -hmm. They're totally mm -hmm. conforming. If, so there is a provision in the code that allows this with much more expediency, but he predates mm -hmm. that provision. Because it's like it's not even pre zoning. I think it's pre seventy. There's a date. Yeah, 1938. Uh, well, no, no. That that the expediter review can happen. Oh, but yeah. This is f f uh, far exceeds that. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's right. contemplated elsewhere. No. So uh, they're under because they're under a half acre. We, we need to work with the health department on maybe getting a couple credits put on it. But we're in that process. Um, okay. As uh, expedited as possible would be great. But we may ask if there's not public interest at the pre pre application. We may ask waiving the public hearing for the final. I'm just I'm just prepping the board see for that. A lot of neighbors around. There could be a lot of yeah. neighbors. Yeah. So what's our action on this? Action is to schedule a, a um, public hearing for August 10th. And where okay. do we stand now, Carrie, with August? Three, three for August 10th. And, th and three for the July 27th? Four. Is this Four. A, is this a pre-submission? Pre-app. 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 Pre pre okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you all. Good to see you, Carl. Did we take did a vote, vote on no. that? No, no we didn't take a vote. Okay, oh. motion. 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 Motion by George, second by Tom. All in favor? Aye. Opposed Aye. abstentions. Five in favor, two absent. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. All right. Jeff. So we'll move mm. to number 13. You can come with it. So the board recently saw an application for Turf Barns, for turf barns. which was Atlantic uh, uh, Golf Club. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a similar application for National Golf Links of America Turf Barn. Uh, they were before the board uh, when they last of, we uh, adopted a pre-submission report uh, April 3rd, uh, 2023. Uh, this is for uh, a proposed uh, 5,100 and uh, 5,100 square foot single story wood frame barn with uh, nine storage bays. I'll bring this up for you. Mm -hmm. well, I was going to test it. Thank you. Thank you for the material. They always come nicely hey, prepared. <clears throat> Storage of carts and equipment? Equipment, no carts. This was built into the side of the hill, right? If I'm not yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there was an archaeological report. This is located in the New York State archaeological sensitive area. Um, at the time of the maintenance building, which is the primary structure in this area, uh, which was back in April of 2011, uh, the applicant supplied the board of the archaeological investigation slash report, uh, which showed the area to not be impacted uh, by any um, artifacts uh, or um, any sensitivities associated with the uh, archaeological um, area. I'll bring the map for you so you can see. That was for the large building? That was for the large building, the yes. All the buildings. All the buildings. We came, we came before you, sorry, uh, Tony mm -hmm. Panza, uh, Rogers McKay, architect for the golf club. When we came before you for the environmental building, the large building, the staff housing, all of the asphalt and dra drainage and septic at that time. You did the archaeological review, okay, yes. and nothing was found. Right, so they had and that, that uh, the subject right. area was included in that as well. So the uh, applicant submitted a um, full site plan application, um, which also included uh, the site plan, which was referred to the town engineer. Uh, that was uh, done May 9th. Uh, town engineer uh, deemed it incomplete, where the applicant subsequently submitted a revised plan, uh, which was then uh, deemed complete by the town engineer uh, on June, 6th, uh, June 9th. Uh, Do you have a report? Yes. So we're doing two things today. 
Um, on the secret, it is unlisted. Uh, and it wants the action. Yes. So we have to deem, uh, we have to actually um, handle these as two separate actions. So we do a secret first. Short EAF or it's coming up. It's on its way. Okay. Mm -hmm. The barn is a wood frame barn. There are uh, no bathroom facilities being um, proposed for this structure. Um, uh, the structure as well uh, includes some drywalls for any uh, stormwater run runoff. Uh, so I'm uh, proposing a uh, negative declaration for this. Just go through these, would sure, you quickly? Sure, absolutely. Would the proposed action create a material conflict uh, with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulation? No. Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity uh, of the use of land? Uh, will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? Will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental, environmental characteristics that caused the establishment of the critical environmental area, CEA? Will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walking? Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy uh, and its fails to incorporate reasonab uh, reasonably uh, available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? Uh, would the proposed action impact existing public slash private uh, water supplies, public slash private water, uh, wastewater treatment utilities? Uh, would the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic uh, resources? Uh, would the proposed action result in the adverse change uh, to natural resources, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, fauna? Uh, will the proposed action result in an increase uh, in the potential erosion, flooding, or drainage, pro uh, or drainage problems? Um, will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental uh, resources or, uh, or health, or human health? So these are all no or small impacts Correct. that don't amount to the site is currently still being used for storage, just uh, on the exterior. Uh, and, uh, most of your materials now will be stored on the interior, uh, which I believe is, should be a benefit uh, to this particular area. And um, I think Tony. No toilet. No toilet. No, the no main, nothing. The main building has the has all the services in it. It's right. just, just for storage. Same finishes as the existing building, All right. not visible from the from the road. So this is sort of a a question that, in terms of sustainability, have you ever thought of putting solar on the roof, and have you ever thought of installing some uh, electric charging stations in the in that one day? So these carts are these carts electric that you have? These are currently these aren't carts. These are. Uh, vehicles for operation on the, on I the golf course. I understand, but. The, the, it, the main building, uh, there has actually been a changeover of the mowing equipment to uh, electric. The ones that are in here are generally more, uh, more like a pickup, a backhoe, vehicles like that. 
so that there is a changeover that's occurring, not just at national, but at all the golf courses where they're changing over to electric equipment. Mm -hmm. So where do you have electric charging stations? Oh, are these battery powered or? Battery. Yeah. Um, battery charged from a bat? Yeah, they're, some of them are with, within the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jack, yeah, I you know, really support that line mm -hmm. of thinking because at some point, I mean, these, that roof, the mm -hmm. one we're reviewing and the others ideal for solar, solar panels and putting a battery uh, storage thing and eventually being able to plug in whether it's golf carts or small equipment this and is an ideal location for yeah, it yeah and because you get e a lot of e each club uh, that i work with we do discuss okay. uh, solar panels quite often okay. the one hindrance that has been there is that they are uh, non-profit so any of the uh, federal rebates are for profit. So you either have to find a third party to put it in or you, you do it at full cost. In the latest uh, Inflation Reduction Act just came out and the material was just released, I think a week ago, there are now provisions in it for non-tax paying entities yeah, I just saw that to be too. able to get. So mm -hmm. I think you're gonna see a lot more, not just in terms of photovoltaics, but in terms of geothermal, because geothermal has now been listed in that. Mm -hmm. And um, in, for me, at least, for the work that I do, you know, we converted this clubhouse over to geothermal. So it went from, not this building, the clubhouse, it went from steam oil to uh, geothermal. And it was successful, the geothermal? Because I thought yes. this whole area is not no. Suitable for geothermal. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much anyway. Shinnecock Clubhouse, mm -hmm. the, the pro shop that we came in front of you. Yeah. That's all on geothermal. Those are closed uh -huh. loop systems. Uh -huh. and Good. Uh, very beneficial. Yeah. Well, and those were at you know full cost because they don't get. Right. So we're going to just make a recommendation that you consider sustainable because that's mm -hmm. part of the sustainable paragraph and mm -hmm. and our it might even be special exception. I'm not sure, but we have that paragraph where we're really encouraging solar, uh, electric, um, uh, recha uh, charging stations, mm -hmm. et cetera. This one would be a difficult building for solar. Uh, well, the way it, you've designed it, it's, it's, it it's, it's, it's a, a north-south building, and the west is heavily wooded. So um, it would really be just be picking front. up. Well, it would only be picking up the eastern. Yeah, so. because the this is the, That's the north, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. This way. Uh, and when oh, the but you have a lot of exposure here. Yeah, on the existing building, and there's potential you know for this. Right. Yeah. And again, that comes out of the, as we get deeper into what the, the Inflation Reduction Act yeah. actually says, okay. um, we're investigating all those possibilities. Okay, so just know that that's where we're also making note of that. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing a... Secret first. Secret first, secret vote. So the secret determination is unlisted action, Negative. 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 Yep. So, can I have a motion for that to get that done? Um, Tom. Motion by Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom second. And second by George. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions. Five in favor, two absent. Okay, and then we want completion of this? Yes. And we're complete? We have everything we yes, need? Yes, they received the uh, completeness from the town engineer, and now we can send out uh, the rest of the referrals. Okay. Okay. And was, are we setting a hearing? We asked that there be no uh, yes, we have a public, public hearing. And we discussed that at the, at the pre submission. We had no, uh, no, no neighbors. Yeah. Um, we have very few neighbors, but no one in that area. It's not 30 visible. Day, 30 day written right. comment period then. Motion. Still Motion second. by George, second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Five in favor, two absent. Thank you for preparing such nice documents for us. I appreciate that. Thank you all here. <laughs> on, on a separate topic, not with this application, but <coughs> uh, in terms of the uh, environmental and sustainability, mm -hmm. you probably saw in the paper, we'll be coming back to you at some point for the pool for Southampton. And remember, we were here quite some time ago to start that. Mm -hmm. we're, we're currently looking at about 500 kW for that site. So, right. Which pool is this? That's why it's. Uh, no, it, it was it's the Star Aquas. Oh, the Star Aquas. The Star Aquas. Oh, right. right. yeah. The Star Aquas. Right. The Star Aquas. 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 The Star A
great. I think they're raising money, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. Tony. Just to kick your own 20 George, years. are we done? I and mean, Jeff? One last one. Oh, we do? 18. Yes, number 18, which oh. is an old file map, uh, uh, road abandonment. Okay. Peconic Shores. Peconic Shores map 108 plus two. Um, so this, since they weren't part of here. This line is located in the North Sea. Um, let me pull it up here, you can see it better. Uh, just off of uh, Great, Hill, Great Hill Road, uh, this development map uh, was opened back in 2000 and 2010, um, which is listed as 1 Albert Avenue, which is this larger piece here. Uh, but, but if you refer back to the development map itself, you'll notice that it actually also included the subject property. There we go. Actually, let me give you a better one. So the larger piece uh, includes this piece here. Here is Florence Avenue, uh, which is the road that we're discussing today. Uh, and the subject property here is uh, adjacent to it, to the east of that. Um, the applicant um, at the time owned parcel two uh, of this uh, development uh, section map, uh, and now also owns uh, the scrub property, which is the subject property uh, tax map number, what do I have it as? Tax map number um, 12.8. Um, so this Florence Avenue was abandoned um, in half. Uh, it's a 50 foot right away that was then split uh, and then 25 feet, which is to the right or to the uh, west of the subject property is what's left. So I'll show you that as well. That's what they're requesting. So, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Mr. Deegan, John Deegan, currently owns lot two, which is considered a uh, one Albert today, but also now owns uh, the subject property, which is tax lot um, uh, eight. So he wants 50% of that road abandoned. Correct. The 25 feet <coughs> that's currently left. Do, Dennis, do we need the adjoining property um, approval or not? He is he technically the adjoining property. Well, I think, we, I think we, half of it was already banned. Correct. Yeah. So he's looking for the other half. So, so this, this part does not that. exist. Okay. He has that. Yeah. Which he now owns this too. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So then he takes ownership of it. He just gets abandoned. more land. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It doesn't lead to any other lot other than his lot, uh, at least uh, on the northern portion of this, uh, uh, of this road. Um, but this is pretty straightforward as far as uh, the abandonment is concerned. It's 25 feet. Uh, is essentially what they're requesting, and I'll bring the aerial back up for you one last time. This is where you can see once this is done, mm -hmm. the, so that uh, the road will be effectively abandoned. The northern part of Florence, or correct, the upper part is that already abandoned, and this part here. The far uh, west portion has been abandoned. Uh, no, you said Florence. Are you talking about right. up here somewhere? Or yeah, is it? Let me go back to the map. We're just abandoning yeah, the where's last the few access, feet of the it. The access comes in where? Correct. To that lot. So that's it. Florence essentially stops here. Right, but where's uh, the access to that? Great so Hill this lot Great Hill uh, gains Road. access off of Albert. Somewhere. Albert is this road here. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Mm. Coming out this way. Yeah. So are those uh, developed, developable parcels or ascending parcels? Uh, these are actually uh, receiving parcels. They're receiving parcels. Okay. Mm. 
Okay, and so. Of course, part of the approval is going to require a draft uh, certificate of management, which was submitted by the applicant, title cert, approval by the highway and uh, assessor's office. Okay, those are the conditions. Those are the conditions, okay. yes. So, motion to approve. Motion, motion by Kate, second by I'm George. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions, five in favor, two absent. That's it, Jeff? That's it. Great. Great. Motion to adjourn. A motion. By Kate, mm -hmm. second by George. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions, we are adjourned. Dennis, are you coming back tonight or not? I'll, I'll